All right, bunch of stuff to get to. I don't know how much we're going to be able to dive into because we've already wasted a lot of time. Come here on. we go. Meghan Markle scored a legal victory yesterday as her years-long battle with her half-sister, Samantha Markle, came to a close. Samantha's defamation lawsuits were dismissed with prejudice by the judge. The dismissal with prejudice means that Samantha cannot file the claims again. Uh, she had claimed that she was defamed by Meghan during the Duchess of Sussex 2021 interview with Oprah Winfrey along with uh, the Netflix series Harry and Meghan. Samantha's original lawsuit was dismissed as the judge ruled the comments made during the Oprah interview by Meghan were her opinion about the actress's own childhood. Which is the truth. Yeah, the judge wrote at the time as a reason. She may not like them, but they were. As a reasonable listener would understand it, defendant merely expresses an opinion about her childhood and a relationship with her half-siblings. However, the royal's half-sister was allowed to file an amended complaint. The claims were brought again in court in April of 2023. Uh, but that has now, all this has been put to close. However, uh, she and her legal team believe the amended complaint would prove that Megan has defamed her sister and that that case will be heard by a jury. Uh, Peter Tickton, Samantha's lawyer, revealed they plan to appeal the latest ruling. I, so, you know, I don't it, it's know. crazy. My perception of the law and the legal system, yeah. I, I always entertained the, the possibility that, okay, certain cases will run their course and end. And it seems these days, yeah. they just keep picking at them over and over so, and over again. I guess they can't file again, but they can, they can furl. appeal. They can yes. furl. They can't file, but they can furl if they want to. So, I don't know. Ah, hell. Ah, hell. Uh, director Roman Polanski is set to face trial in August of next year for a rape <laughs> lawsuit filed against him in Los Angeles. I bet he'll return for that. Uh, the Jane Doe plaintiff alleges that Polanski raped her when she was underage in 1973. Uh, according to the lawsuit, she met Polanski at a party and he later invited her to dinner after giving her shots of tequila. Polanski allegedly drove her to his house where he told her he wanted to have sex with her despite her objections. Uh, his lawyers have denied the claims. Uh, Polanski, who of course has been a uh, who of course has been a fugitive from the U.S. since 1978 after pleading guilty uh, to the rape of another minor, may appear at the trial via a live video feed. Uh, he's in the middle of a similar trial in France. Samantha Gamir. Uh, who Polanski raped when she was 13, 1978, appeared in court Friday to ask judge to give her closure by resolving the case. So it's that one of those. Continues. He directed one of my absolute, fi I mean, Chinatown is a masterpiece. So, you know, you're conflicted, but I mean, the work lives on its own. You removed <clears throat> but the art from the artist. You removed the art from the artist. And then he, in his own life, had the tragedy of his wife and baby murdered by the, the Manson family. Yeah. It doesn't justify this. Right, exactly. So I don't know where all this stands or what's going to come. It's going it. to come down to a coin toss. It's been dragging around for decades, so we will see. All right, this was the most interesting story that I've seen this morning. Uh, years after alleging in her memoir uh, that the producer once urged her to have sex with a co-star, Sharon Stone has decided to name names. Uh, oh. Stone now says ostentatious film producer and studio mogul Robert Evans, Revan Evans, who died in 2019, is the one who pressured her to sleep with Billy Baldwin, her co-star in the 1993 erotic thriller Sliver. Uh, Stone claims that Evans called her into his office during filming to request that she help Baldwin's performance in the film. And she said, and I quote, she was on a podcast, she said, or an interview, uh, he's running around his office in his sunglasses explaining to me that he slept with Ava Gardner, uh, his The Sun Also Rises co-star, and I should sleep with Billy Baldwin because if I slept with Billy Baldwin, Billy Baldwin's performance would get better. And we needed Billy to be better in the movie because that was the problem. Uh, according to... <laughs> that wasn't the only problem with Sliver. <laughs> according, well, that's what yeah. she's saying that he said right, the issue right, was. Yeah. Uh, according to Stone, Evans' thinking was, if I could sleep with Billy, then we would have chemistry on screen, and if I would just have sex with him, then that would save the movie. And the real problem in the movie was me, because I was so uptight and so not like a real actress who could just F him and get things back on track. And the real problem is that I was such a tight ass, she said. Uh, Sliver was Stone's follow-up to Basic Instinct, during which she says that she had a markedly different experience. She said... I didn't have to F Michael Douglas. Uh, Michael would come to work and just know how to hit those marks and do that line and rehearse and show up. And now all of a sudden, I'm in the I have to F people business, she said. 
Uh, Stone wrote that she did not follow Evans's uh, alleged directive and was labeled difficult for it. She said, naturally, I didn't, uh, you know, what my co-star. Uh, he was baffled enough with me, confusing him some more, she wrote. But he did make a few haphazard passes at me in the upcoming weeks. I'm sure spurred on by this genius, she says. Billy Baldwin, uh, while that movie was going on, the, the gossip was they hated each other. Uh, and that they had no chemistry. Do you remember the movie? It's, it's a weird movie about like a voyeur in an apartment complex. I watched it because of the success of Basic Instinct. Right, exactly. And, and so I, it was hot on the heels of that. And that was a sexy movie. And Sliver was in trying to be a sexy movie and really was not. Yeah. You know what, though? I hear stories like this and I'm like, Hollywood it really is like, I, I didn't know it was like that. You know, it, I think it, oh, yeah. it, it was, I, I mean, it's we, know, been like we that. know now. Yeah. But. I, I don't. I didn't know it was like that. There are movies. They've made movies about the sleaze of Hollywood. Hollywood makes knows itself and makes movies about how sleazy it is. And has always been. If you go back to the days of like Louis B. Mayer and the Warner Brothers and all the stuff that they would do, it was par for the course. There, there is something. I, I think it's set in like the 1950s. It's on. I believe it's on Netflix. I cannot remember. I only watched uh, a portion of it. But I mean, that's what it was yeah. about. And like. Do, you know, sexual favors for jobs, and you know, it was nuts. Kathy, you ever read stories about Nancy Reagan? No. The way that she she describes it. Uh, Take my wife's name out your mouth. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's just put it this way: there were a lot of things in Nancy's mouth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, really? She sucked her way through a lot of Hollywood. What? Yeah. Nancy Reagan? Oh, my God. Yeah, According she, to who? A lot of stories. Uh, wow. Uh, she was a BJ queen for a long time. It, it's like, But, Steve, it's one of those things where, like, it sort of lives in lore, and then it beca- and then people finally confirm it years later. Right, you know? right, right. There, there are stories, again, and, and, wow. and I my heart goes out to countless people and actresses who, who had to do, you know, I, I mean, look at... As recently as Mira Sorvino being uh, brutalized by Harvey Weinstein yeah, and all yeah. those people, all the people that he did, and they all, they all keep it under wraps so that they can get their job opportunities. It's, and it's rare that anyone came forward. Well, thinking about this particular scenario, maybe it was a case of not the guy pulling her in the office and say, "Hey, by the way, you got to screw Billy Baldwin." Yeah. He may have been handling it like, "Hey, have you thought about maybe?" You know, yeah. I don't care. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying it's not. It's inappropriate. Hey, Kathy, it's totally yeah. wrong. Your chemistry with Press and Steve's not quite what we need. Yeah, can you imagine? You know what we bring the things together. Yeah, well, just, just, would you mind like little thruple thing going on? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, could you imagine Chuck calling me in his office yeah, yeah, and yeah. listen? <laughs> you should really give both of them handies. By the way, uh, Billy Baldwin has responded to this. Yes. He said, uh, he wrote on social media, not sure why Sharon Stone keeps talking about me all these years later. Does she still have a crush on me? Or is she oh, still you- hurt after all these years because I shunned her advances. This guy sounds like a dirt I bag. I hate him. <laughs> I, she said, uh, I have so much dirt on her that it would make her head spin, but I've kept quiet. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. The story of the meeting I had with Bob Evans imploring him, uh, allow me, uh, yeah, imploring him, allow me to choreograph the final sex scene in the photo that he posted is her facing away from him. So I wouldn't have to kiss Sharon is absolute legend. So, Steve, they must have hated each other. They hated each other. Uh, Uh, He said, wonder if I should write a book and tell the many, many disturbing, kinky and unprofessional tales about Sharon. That might be fun. And there's a whole list of stories about Sharon Stone being difficult to work with and nightmares. So you never know where everything goes. But I think when you... Everything you do is hyper focused on, like as you're right, Nick. This came right after Basic Instinct, which made all a lot of money. All eyes were on yeah. her oh, because yeah. she was the money. And Billy Baldwin was established, but if you're going to talk why reason, uh, reason people are going to go see this movie, you're exactly oh, yeah. right. It would have been Sharon Stone. But yeah. still, in in his comment, uh, you know, I I did you a favor by not releasing the information on you. Like, st- I, yeah. oh. I know, I know, I know. All right, um, this is, uh, I wanted to pass this along. This is uh, unfortunate, but maybe there's a silver lining here. Uh, But Jake Lloyd, who starred in the Star Wars franchise as a child actor, is now in a mental health rehabilitation facility. According to his mother. Yeah, it goes deeper than than we realized. Wait, I'm sorry, who is it? He uh, played Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, Jake Lloyd. Okay. Yeah. So in an interview with uh, Scripps News, Lloyd's mother, Lisa Lloyd, told the outlet about her now 35-year-old son's ongoing struggles with mental illness. She also wanted to share some of the reasons that she's more hopeful today 
than she has been in years. Of course, he appeared in Phantom Menace. And with the 25th anniversary approaching, Lisa thought it would be a perfect time to open up about how her son has been doing since his time in Star Wars. She said, Jake started having some trouble in high school. He started talking about realities. He didn't know if he was in this reality or mm. a different reality. And I didn't really know exactly uh, what to say to that. She said one day he had, she had asked if he completed his homework and he said, I don't even know if I need to do it. I don't know which reality I'm in. And I was like, well, you're in my reality today, so you got to do your homework. After taking Jake to see a doctor, uh, the medical provider said that he could have bipolar disorder, although he was prescribed several medications to correct the issue. Nothing seemed to work. As time went on, he graduated from high school. He was excited about starting uh, college. However, uh, this is where things began to drastically change. He said he missed a lot of classes. He was telling me that people were following him. Oh, man. Uh, she said her son would claim to see people with black eyes staring at him out oh. in public. And that sometimes he would engage in late night conversations with uh, John Stewart through his television. Uh, he continued seeing doctors, and then he was finally diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Oh my God! Yeah, um, she said when they finally told him that it threw him off into an even worse depression. It was really hard. She talked about how he refused to take his medication because he didn't think he was sick, which is a, a refrain that we hear all the time. Uh, Lisa also recalled. A time in 2015 when he led deputies on a multi-county chase before wrecking his car. Uh, when she tried to get him to an attorney, he wouldn't answer her calls. She discussed how painful the situation was while also describing a time when he called her to say that he had been shot in his apartment and she realized he was hallucinating. Uh, he is currently about 10 months into an 18-month stay at a mental health rehabilitation facility wow. after what she calls a full-blown psychotic break mm. about a year ago. Um, and he had turned his car off in the middle of a three-lane road. Police were called. It was a big ordeal. Oh, uh, she said, but he's doing much better than I expected <clears throat> now. Uh, he's becoming a little bit more social. And decades later, he, she says he's still a fan of the franchise. She said he loves all the new Star Wars stuff. People think he hates Star Wars, but he actually loves it. That just must be horrible as a parent. It must be unfathomable. You to can't see. put a cast on that. You no. can't put a Band-Aid on that. No, that I is... God, that's I mean, a long stay, yeah. too, in a mental hospital. Yeah, the, well, he's, you know. But look yeah. at Amanda Bynes. She's, she's posting, yeah, I was saying to Preston the other day uh, about her posting rather frequently now on uh, TikTok and other stuff. And mm -hmm. while she's conversive and there, she's not really there there. Yeah, and as a parent, you just want to protect him, man. That's all you want to do. That's it's, sad, man. It's, it's very, very sad. So hopefully he's getting treatment that can... Make his life, uh, you know, easier to cope with. Yeah. Things, I hope so. We'll see. All right. One last story, and then we will move on to the clips. Uh, Nick, I had you in mind once again. It was Daryl Strawberry's birthday yesterday. Oh. What we did not know is he's recovering from a heart attack uh, and is in the hospital. Uh, he was uh, stricken on Monday, a day before his uh, birthday, his 62nd birthday, and he posted a photo of himself at the hospital on Instagram and wrote, I'm so happy and honored to report that all is well. So Call thankful uh, to the medical team and staff of uh, St. Joseph West in Lake St. Louis for responding so quickly and bringing me through a stent procedure that has brought my heart to total restoration. Nick, it's Daryl Strawberry. I need that card back. Yeah, here's the $8, too. He looks good in the photo. He, he does. does. Uh, Strawberry, he lives in O'Fallon, Missouri, is resting comfortably. Uh, the Mets are going to retire his number 18 on June 1st after retiring uh, Dwight Gooden's number 16 on April 14th. So wow. you got to travel for there. That you have cards yeah. for. Yeah. Wow. Well, all right. I'll, uh, maybe Ladies I'll... and gentlemen, from the President Steve Show, Nick McElwain. Pinch my nose and go to a Mets game. <laughs> uh, the pair led to the team to the 1986 World Series title. So they're both getting their uh, numbers retired, which is really cool. You actually used to have to pinch your nose in Shea Stadium. It just to breathe. Uh, horrible. <laughs> yeah. It was about nine levels of asbestos. <laughs> All right. We can now segue over to the clips. Not dead yet follows Neil. Or no, it says Nell. Is it oh, wow. Nell? All right. Yeah. Yeah, Nell. An accident-prone obituary writer who is hunted by the dead people that she writes about. And in this, in this clip, star Gina Rodriguez uh, talks about the positive energy that uh, each show provides. Here we go. No. Oh, no. Hang on. Let me try it again. Hang on. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. <laughs> let me try. All right. Hold on. Nope. 
Nope, it's not working. Huh. Wait, you know why? Yeah. Hold on. Here, these these aren't engaged. Hold okay. on a second. Let's try this. All right, now we can try this. Son of a bitch. I'm so tired. I don't like. No, nothing's happening. The Nell clips are probably better. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, At least more understandable. All right. Engage. Well, we lost one thing. We got phones. We don't have Vox Pro. All right, we don't have the Vox Pro, which is our digital audio uh, piece of equipment here. So, okay. Well, anyway, uh, the out cue was going to be to tell right now. That's this right there. <laughs> that's all I have. Yes, I don't go away. <laughs> oh, my God. I haven't heard that one yeah, before. That's beautiful. Hear that again. Yes, I don't go away. <laughs> that's right. kind of musical, yeah. actually. That's her, that's her uh, live at Red Rock. Okay. Uh, and then the here, uh, this is another clip that we won't have a clip from. Okay. The teachers of Abbott Elementary have uh, ex exited their comfort zone for season three while Principal Coleman was encouraged to go back in. I got here, it. Janelle James talks about uh, Quinta Brunson writing an epic dance scene into the first episode. I'd like to apologize <laughs> to Jennifer Garner and her pool boy, Ben Affleck, yes. for incorporating them into my fantasy life. I apologize to anyone who's been offended by my fictional creations, Chris Agon, the philosopher of evil, and the skull sealer. Oh, wow. I can't believe no one's turned that into a remix song for us yeah. yet. Oh. We've been playing that for years. We just recently rediscovered it. Like, yeah. we go through phases. Soon, I'm sure Rubber Johnny will make his oh my uh, God. reappearance. Uh, Abbott Elementary airs tonight on ABC, by the way. All right, and that is where we're going to wrap it up with the entertainment break this morning. We got a lot of stuff going on today. So we have a secret text word, and we're giving away tickets to see our buddy Brad Williams. Uh, he's in AC at uh, the Ocean Casino Resort, uh, the Ovation Hall. Uh, tickets go on sale Friday. The show's not till Saturday, October 19th. But text the word secret to 39333, and then you'll have your October 19th weekend yes. taken care of if you win. And we'll randomly grab a text or on top of, you know, having you call in with the secret text word. Uh, we will go live on Fox Good Day this morning. And we're going to have actor Judge Reinhold joining us because he's got a show coming up at the Keswick Theater on Saturday to screen Fast Times at Ridgemont High and do a Q&A and all that good stuff. So, Excellent. And uh, we're leaving for Florida today. Yes. After the show. We Long are day. heading back and we're reuniting with Casey Boy who will meet us there. We have to have one of those passionate sort of, you know, airport meetings where right. we drop our luggage and go running towards each other. <laughs> I think we are meeting him at the airport, right? Is he yes. picking us up? All yeah. Right. Uh, so anyhow, we will uh, we'll be broadcasting live tomorrow, spring training in Clearwater. But we'll be back in just a second here, so stay with us. I'm from 93.3 WMMR. I mentioned earlier that we're going to see uh, Casey tomorrow. He's uh, been out. He's in uh, South Carolina. His son is a uh, really cool uh, rugby event that's going on. But he texted me yesterday, and he asked me, he's like, do you guys miss me? And I said, passionately. He's texted me the same thing. Did he? Yeah. He did not. And well, and then did we he respond? No. Do he responded with me? He's like, this is a very lonely tri oh, trip. Oh, really? Yeah. Even though he's with his son, his son is off doing these rugby events and he's busy, you know, uh, through, for a lot of time. So he's just kind of twiddling his thumbs and hanging out. And not I really find doing that interesting. Anything. He didn't text me to see if I missed him. <gasps> mm. I sense mm. tension. But he's but he said he's lonely, so I think he's very much looking forward to to our meetup uh, <laughs> later today. And he wants to see an alligator. Oh my god! God damn! Just go look for an alligator, dude. I've meanwhile I was the I like one time when I was there. I, it's just there. I yeah. It. Like yeah. how has he not seen one at this? point? I don't know. And it's really not that big a deal when you see one, unless it's like right next to you or something like that. But uh, it, I've been on a couple of golf trips with him. <laughs> And he is just, he just he's a little kid. He's just yeah, wandering yeah. around looking for alligators out on the golf course. And we never did see him. He was always so disappointed. Take uh, half a side of, of uh, lamb or whatever and just uh, yeah, dip it in the your, water. Yeah, yeah tie it to your ankle, walk around for a while. <laughs> You'll find one. You'll find a gator. Uh, hey, I wanted to mention this story. I had it a couple of days ago in uh, the Bizarre File, but I wanted to see if people had similar stories because I'm certain that there are. And it also might give us some ideas down the road should we find ourselves in minor peril. It was a story of a woman at uh, Cambridge University, and she was locked in a medieval tower. Yeah, it sounds like a Rapunzel, but it's real. And she, quote unquote, MacGyvered an escape. Uh, she was locked in the bathroom at Queens College, and she remained stuck for seven hours, and she eventually found her way out, and she was able to use a cotton swab 
as a hook and an eyeliner pencil to eventually Jeez. get get the latch undone and got out of there. So she improvised. She did what MacGyver did. Yes. Then she found a way Didn't to use a gun uh, to uh, to get out of a situation. So I wanted to know if people had any similar stories where they were able to use standard items that were laying around to help you. And I do have a story. Um, my sister and I were traveling in Mexico. Okay. Where you don't want to find yourself no. in a weird situation. We were in uh, Rosarito. By the way, my yeah. squeaky microphone oh, is yeah. even more squeaky now. Um, <laughs> well, you put stuff on it. So so we were in Rosarito and she locked her keys in her car. Mm -hmm. So we're in Mexico. Right. Keys are locked in the car. And we're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? How the hell are we going to, you know, we're not going to... You don't speak uh, the language. We don't speak the language. We hear rumors about the Mexican police. Yes. And that they'll arrest you for no reason. It's probably not true, but whatever, maybe. So we didn't want to take any chance. And we're just puzzling over this for hours. We're trying a coat hanger to get the, the car unlocked and Excuse all. me, sir, but are you a foot model? And and uh, eventually she she had a, a light bulb moment. And she's like, I need a broom. I need a broom. I'm like, what are you, the hell are you going to do with it? Nothing. Just give me a broom. <laughs> so I uh, go to the hotel, find yeah. a broom. There was a, she, she had her sunroof slightly cracked open. Uh-huh. And so she used the broom and she had a manual trunk release on the floor. That's and pretty she was able smart. To push the broom down in there, Whoa. hit the button, pop the trunk open. We climbed through the trunk, opened up the car. God, it was boom. It was awesome. So you pushed the, the back seat down? Uh, the yes. Yeah. Yes. And okay. Or it was like a hatchback or something. Oh, well, like then you're that. yeah, you're go right in. Yeah, yeah. So so she was able to get her way, save the day. Your Holy hero. Cool. Very 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 uh, inventive thinking on her part. Uh, and then I have you guys seen the videos lately of if you find yourself in an emergency where you need to get into a vehicle, let's say you've locked your dog Stop. in or yeah, yeah. or your child or right, something right. like that. Where you use duct tape? Have you seen no. this? No. So, oh. so we're uh, you're assuming? Are we assuming we're the the a non fob situation where you're the you actually have keys for whatever reason you yeah. can't get into your car? Okay. Right? If you've lost your keys, you know I, I don't know. I locked Jason the car before when he was younger in the car seat. Remember, I had the Audi, and uh, for whatever reason, you could still lock your damn keys wow. in the car. Okay. okay. And I've seen this duct tape thing, but I've yep. never seen the end result. Like I I've, I've watched videos of it. This is what you do. This is what you do, and then I never see them. So what do you do? Pull the window or oh, whatever's yeah. supposed so, to happen. So so you take uh, you take duct tape and you create a a rectangle on the window with it, and then you put a piece of duct tape on the top of that uh, that um, uh, rectangle. You leave it dangling. You don't you don't actually tape all of it to the window. Okay, so it's and loose. you use it as if it's a handle, and you yank down like this, and it will actually pull down the window enough. For you to reach your arm in and then unlock oh. the car door. And, so, hmm. That's yeah. not a genius. Wow. Now, Casey was wondering if that actually worked or not. Um, I don't know if I want to try it on a car that way, you know, because you could, I, does that F up the car? Well, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But you're in an emergency situation. Right, right, right. You need to get into it. And there's another, we're looking at another video that uh, Nick pulled up and this has more than just a rectangle. It's like almost covering the entire <laughs> just window. Just the entire car in duct, and tape. duct tape. But then you, you leave part hanging as if it were a handle and it's showing this guy doing it, unlocking it. What if you locked and, duct tape in the car, though? What if, <laughs> yeah. Then you're really screwed. Then you're just screwed. But I uh, I think, it, you know, if you're not concerned about breaking the, the window or, or messing up your, you know, the interior of your the, your door, then you got to do that. Sorry, I was masterful. And, and this is a standard one. What, the coat hanger. Uh, yeah. when, when you did not have, when you had the actual lifted up, um, you know, uh, door locks. Yes. And I and I was a master. In fact, I kept a bent coat hanger a good idea. in my briefcase going to college. Seriously? Just in case. In your briefcase? Just in case. That's funny. Yeah. I had a guy, one time I, we were playing a gig somewhere in my band and I locked my keys in my car and I didn't know what the hell to do because I was going to have to call a, uh, a locksmith. Yeah, yeah. God Almighty, expensive, expensive, especially for a car. I had to do that for a uh, um, an apartment one oh, time, okay. and uh, the guy the guy took like three seconds. He's like, "Here you go, hundred dollars." Yeah, I'm like, oh my <laughs> God, I I actually bought a set of. Well, anyhow, I, I had a guy who had, had worked at this bar we were playing at, and he brought out a set of picks, and he picked my said, wow. lock and okay. got, got in my car. I thought that was awesome. Uh, I a couple of years ago, I bought a uh, a lock picking trainer. How is it? 
I started reading a little bit of it, and I'm like, this is more involved than I thought. Right. And then I just set it aside, and I never played around because with it. Because the ones who do it and do it effective. Now, they sell these things, and apparently, obviously, the uh, you know our, our uh, various agencies have things that immediately can pick a lock quickly. But when I've seen people picking locks a lot of times, Preston, it involves two. Yep. Devices, yep, exactly. And I'm like, I'm too stupid for that. There are these pins that, that yeah, you yeah. have to hold down. There's specific types of locks and every like, specific no. thing. So give me a hammer. I, I think I'm going to learn. I think it's it's on my my tiny bucket list of things that I want to learn how to do for your for your theft career after radio. No, just because you never know when you, you never might. Know. You yeah. never know when you might be in an emergency and need to pick a lock. So, uh, but anyhow, we're taking calls of people who have been MacGyvered or have MacGyvered themselves out of the situation. I'm going to go to uh, Tim. Hey, Tim. Morning, bud. Uh, this is Jim. Jim. Oh, Jim. Jim. What's going on, Jim? Hey, so I was working on a generator up on a third-story building one time. And it was a little windy, and I heard a, a crash. I turned around. My ladder fell off the, the <laughs> roof onto the balcony below. Oh, no. Nobody was home. Oh. I had no way to get down. So luckily, I had a roll of duct tape on me, a spray bottle to clean stuff. I wrapped the duct tape around the bottle Pitched it down, caught the leg of the ladder, was able to pull the ladder up. Um, this was after the the, ro- the uh, tape broke once, mm-hmm. tied it up, got the ladder up, and was able to get down. So you Great used, idea. basically, you fished for the ladder and you used the spray bottle as the hook. As the hook, exactly. Wow. That's a great idea. Yeah, how how like, proud of yourself were you after that? Uh, oh my Jim. god! I told that this happened like two years ago, and I can't. I love telling the story. <laughs> He's pitching it to Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best. Yeah, that, right. that's cool. Thanks, yeah, you, Jim. Yeah. Don't want to spend all your time up there. Duct tape will save your ass. Duct tape is one of the great resources to have in your. In fact, you have it in your car. Um, you know, the Gorilla Tape or anything that has some sort of durability to it. When you were talking about putting a rectangle around the window, I thought you were talking about smashing it but stopping the. No, uh, no, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's... What, yeah. Yeah, right? I see that. Right. Uh, no, I. you know what? I should keep some duct tape. Do you guys have, um, uh, like, first aid kits I've and gone, stuff like that? I bought this insane kit in the car. This thing is ridiculous. It's so stupid, yeah. but it appeals to me because I got to get all that tactical yeah. crap. Yeah. So I've got every goddamn thing you could need. Right. You know, the trick is to remember to put it in the car. Right. I do. I have the first aid kit. I have, you know, like whatever, some tools and stuff. Food, I, pepper I even, stuff. No, I that's, have that in his bag. That's what I was going to say. What I don't have in my car, and my friend always keeps granola bars in her car. Yes. Uh, I don't have any... Any type of food. So if I were to get stranded somewhere, I would probably die of starvation. You don't eating. like packaged uh, beef jerky. I uh, keep a like whole it. rotisserie chicken wow. in the glove compartment okay. spinning. Yeah. Because uh, you never know. Yeah. The trick is to remember, Preston, to keep it moist. No, the, the um, <laughs> I bought one of those uh, those uh, tire inflators. Yeah. The ones that do not need uh, you know, USB. Yeah, battery. Yeah, yeah, and it... it it actually works like gangbusters. Oh, really? It's really good. Uh, I, did you use it? I just wanted to see how how it worked to get one under my belt, and yeah, it's it's pretty effortless. You punch in the the uh, the pressure. Okay. It has a, a big digital readout on it, and it it does it, and it does it quickly. You can use it to inflate, um, you know, yard stuff or pool stuff yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or a basketball. It's amazing. Okay, I got one of those for I think Christmas. I haven't tinkered around with it yet. But. Put it next to the uh, home beer maker, right? <laughs> All right, let me go next to Keith. Hey, Keith, good morning. Good morning. All right, bud, how did you MacGyver yourself, MacGyver yourself out of a situation? Uh, I was exploring an old abandoned warehouse one time by myself, and uh, I didn't know there was a uh, caretaker on the property. Uh, and the door that I came in, I heard shut when I was on the second floor. Oh, no. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I, I have explored for about two more hours. I couldn't find a way out. Uh, I ended up finding an old fire hose. I ended up climbing out the third floor with an old... Uh, <laughs> so you you, 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 John mcclain it there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was quite quite the uh, quite the day. Wow. wow. That's that's impressive. And I've always wondered how that w- scenario would play out because you've seen that in a you've few You've seen it happen. I would, would, would one of those old style hose spools hold a human man right. trying to rappel down from Keith. a Location was it one that was uh, like made out of um, uh, like canvas? Yeah, it was like an old canvas. One. Okay. okay, well that's yeah. pretty durable. Real durable, yeah. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, let me go next to Eric. Eric, you're on the air. Good morning. Hey, sorry, Eric. About work. Hey, it's all. Bu- sorry, buddy. What's up? 
So, uh, yeah, I was traveling a couple of years ago down in Louisiana. I had to get up at like 2 a.m. to meet my boss. We were going to go travel to Texas. And uh, I go into the, the bathroom, do whatever, get a shower, and then I go to get out, and the door was locked. Oh. So, <laughs> so I'm freaking out. I, for whatever reason, I didn't even bring my phone with me, so I had no way of calling anybody. It's 3 a.m. or whatever. So I ended up grabbing the hairdryer and beat the heck out of the doorknob enough to, like, loosen the, the cap on it and then use the plug to unscrew the doorknob all apart and took it apart. <laughs> so you out. you were able to loosen the cap that covers the screws and you were able to remove it, so you kind of just beat that loose. Yeah, you have to do what you have to do, man. Yeah, and I, so I, I brought down the, the handle and everything to the reception area and I said the... What the heck? You should have complained. What the hell is this? This, yeah. yeah, this came yeah. off of my hands. Yeah, I paid for I'm this. I'm paying place. for a room and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's secure <laughs> and yet this falls off. Uh, I love it. That's a great idea, Eric. Nice job, man. Cool. Uh, here's a text. I love this one. It says, one time during a bad storm, uh, the motor on my windshield wipers broke. I literally, I took my boot laces off. I tied my wipers together. Oh, my gosh. And then Stop. I tied the other boot laces to the end of the wipers <laughs> And was driving like a marionette, swishing oh, my wipers my manually God. across the windshield. It's, it's inventive. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's absolutely inventive. You you adapted. Kathy, you resourceful. Your dad MacGyver the the, the the brake lights, right? Oh, my brake lights were at one point. He was like, "Okay, so when you're stopping, just push the doorbell that I have in your center console. That's your brake light." <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. It's a doorbell in the center console. Uh, I'm gonna go to Joe. Morning, Joe. Oh, sorry. Good morning. How are you guys? Good, Good, buddy. What's going on, my man? This is this is more of a uh, like a uh-uh story. I uh, locked my keys in my car, running in my driveway at home. Okay. Um, unfortunately for me, nobody was home, so I couldn't get in the house, and nobody was around. So I walked five miles. Well, I called the tow truck company, and they wanted one hundred fifteen dollars to get me in my car. So I walked to Home Depot or Lowe's and got me a blood pressure cuff. Uh, okay. And the blood crusher cuff works fantastic. How, How did, did you, you use it? it? It's not like a blood pressure cuff you take your blood. It's like a black little great invention. You stick it in your door jam. You give it a couple puffs, and it spreads it open a little bit. I've seen this. Yes. Yeah. And so it gives you enough room to, to finagle your way in, correct? For $115, I think I bought 10 of them. So I have 10 of them scattered around my house hidden. <laughs> Um, and it was great. It was the best hundred and some bucks I ever not spent. You know, they, they use those for all sorts of things, you know, lifting things up, lifting. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty reliable. Have you used it for anything other than getting into your own car? I uh, used it twice since then. And no, I have not. All right. I've never used it before. <laughs> so it's literally a blood pressure. It's yeah, made. I don't, know the, I don't know the exact name of it. It looks like, like a little notepad and it's just like the size of a notepad. You stick it in your door jam. And you just like you would have blood. Oh, okay. So it's made for that. It's, okay. Yeah, All right. yeah. I thought you literally <laughs> bought. You went to like a CBS <laughs> right, yeah. and got the the blood. Okay. And I, gotcha. I need some depends. No. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. That's uh. Yeah. That is available. So he didn't make it himself. Yeah. Per se. But he got creative. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Let's go to Andy. Uh. Hello there, Andy. Hey! Morning. It's Andy from Germantown. Hey, Andy from Germantown. What's up, man? So I was driving down 76. I had an old car, the 68 Mustang, and actually had a big, thick radiator hose, and it blew on me. Um, radiator fluid went everywhere. The big old hole. I, I had some electrical tape in the in the trunk, so I got that and wrapped it, the whole spool around it because I figured it expands. It would hold. Um, and But I didn't have any radiator fluid left. I thought about peeing in it, which we did in the Army once. Yeah, you, yeah. Instead, we uh, there was a... There's a big embankment, so I I crawled down the embankment with a container I had in the back, and there was a creek at the bottom. I spent like 15 minutes filling up this container and this little trickle of water, and then I crawled my way back up this 30-foot embankment and filled it up, and it worked. That's a complete MacGyver moment. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I remember pressing I fixed uh, an old-style VCR. Um, I was, I you know, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I kind of saw how the mechanism worked. And I used uh, I used a, sh- a shoelace tied together on the spools to um, you know I tied it at a certain point and then okay. kept it out really small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was it would it, would, it worked it, as a belt. It worked as a belt. No yeah. kidding. And I'm like, 
Okay. How long did that last? <laughs> a week. <laughs> but it worked. When you have porn to watch, you got to, you got to. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're gonna, in the moment. It's absolutely. a crisis. Uh, I'm going to go to Sean. Hi, Sean. Morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, what's up, bud? I, uh, I jump started the car with a drill battery, a fork, and a knife because I didn't have jumper cables. <laughs> a All drill right. battery, a fork, and a knife. I want to hear how this works. It's just the transfer of energy. If you have a DeWalt, I had a DeWalt battery, but you take the fork, you bend the second and third prong down, so you have one and four out. It fits into the copper ports on the battery. Okay. You touch the fork to the black. Or you touch the fork to the red, and then you touch the knife oh my God. from the black Wait, to the straw. How do you hold the fork th- without getting shocked? You hold the battery. You hold the, the battery. That doesn't the sound safe. Let the fork touch. And so you were able to get a successful charge and jump a car and get it started. Uh-huh. Wow. I mean, it's more of a redneck trick than I'm a guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, you you uh, bubbed it. It's forking amazing. Yeah. Uh, I love that. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it. There's the I don't, I don't have I don't have with car batteries. Uh, there's that scene in in Breaking Bad where they get stuck out in the desert in their RV, and he's got to find and, and the battery dies. Yeah, and they're like, they're, you, you will die trying to walk yeah, yeah, out yeah. of there. Yeah, and so they MacGyver legitimately a way how to, he created a trickle charger <laughs> to just get right. a, barely enough of a charge. He had to sit there and crank it like for eight hours. Yeah. And eventually got enough of a charge to start it back up. You imagine having that chemistry knowledge in your brain to be able to do something like that. I have seen on um, I don't know uh, science programs uh, where where they've used a drill, like a battery powered drill, yeah. to create some kind of a power generator uh, before. Uh, but I wonder. So, so on those, like you talk about those those things you keep in the car, the little um, the little solar battery that you can apply to anything you're using. Does anyone have those? I do. Uh, yeah. Like a little in your car, you keep it there. Um, I keep it for like charging purposes. Okay. Uh, so I don't think that it would work on a car. Okay. Um, but they've got to be. Like, I mean, there are outdoor batteries you can buy that are pretty large batteries, and yeah, and maybe you could transfer that power to. I mean, a car. I if, if you're talking like a real dilemma where you had to do, you know, something. You know what I love? Every now and then on my um, Instagram algorithm, a video will pop up of these people that um, will essentially create things while they're out camping or backpacking. Yes. Um, and it'll show you how to make a, a functional stool right, or how right, to right. make a, uh, a a water heater or, you know, out of just branches what you have there. and it's, stuff it's like, lying around. Yeah. It's, it's like their grill stuff. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I, I was watching this documentary, President, about these people who were trapped on an island, and they made a car <laughs> out of coconuts and palm leaves. <laughs> and it was crazy. Why has that not been more widely shared these days? Yeah, uh, Steve, let me, there's, I'm sorry, President. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, uh, Th- there's a Goal Zero. That's It's a brand, and they make this solar-powered Yeti uh, charger, right? And so it, it, it takes a long time to charge. Sure, you would imagine. But you can use it as a generator out in the wild. It's, it's it made for camping purposes. All I right. wonder if you charge that up fully, if you could find a way to transfer any of that power to a car battery. I wonder. I think in the, you'd probably have to have some sort of conduit, perhaps a bear running on a treadmill. Okay. <laughs> I want to hear more about yeah. this idea. And that might help the right. flow. Okay, we have to find a bear. bear. A yeah. moderate size one. Yeah, yes, right. in decent yeah, shape. Yeah. Who and can a, run for a while. Yeah. And a working treadmill. That and a- listens to <laughs> instructions. Right. I wonder, I, I got to believe that these um, uh, solar batteries don't, have a whole lot of juice in them. They you know do, what I mean? They don't. But yeah. if you're talking about, like you're talking about, but the, an emergency, the Breaking Bad scenario, yeah. where you had to power something or maybe perhaps charge a phone, yeah, it could save or, your life, you know, or charge your, your credit cards, <laughs> <laughs> something, all kinds of yeah. uh, applications for this. Uh, let me go next to Don. Good morning, Don. Good morning. How are you? Great, man. What's up, buddy? We're talking Sorry, about Mac- your work. Uh, oh, it's all right. good, buddy. We're talking about MacGyvering your way out of something. What happened to you? All right. Well, my wife kept saying uh, underneath the sink it's wet all the time. So I got a flashlight. Eventually, went on behind, and there's a big hole in the pipe underneath. You know, the little, the little trap. The right. So I didn't have anything to conceal it with. So I said, you know what? I said, let me uh, get a piece of inner tube. So I went down to my basement, my daughter's old bicycle, took the inner tube out of it, cut it about you know six inches, and zip tied it to each side of the pipe. And five years later, it's still working like a charm. Five years later. <laughs> Let me you tell you something, Don, and, and Preston, I'm sure you'll agree with this. Uh, <laughs> oh anyone who's used them, zip 
those those yeah. zip tie those the thing they'll use for handcuffs as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. What you can do with those is Thanks, amazing. Yeah, I use them for all a, the time. A lot of things. And I have different sizes. Like I have like a I'm like the the where the hustler comes in with his own pool. Yeah. I have a case like that of just all those those uh z- they call them zip ties. Yep, zip yeah. ties. I I bought a bunch of them as well, different sizes oh, too, Steve. And I love them. You can use them for tons of things. I just had something in my car that the seatbelt kept falling down into the leather and it was just because the leather was worn and basically they were like, you have to just get a whole new seat. And I was like, well, for one... F you. Well, yeah, for one seatbelt and uh, somehow they were able to use zip ties to okay. make it stay up See? so that it can be used. It's nothing they can't do. I like zip ties and I like carabiners. I have a thing oh, for yeah, carabiners. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah, know yeah. why. I, I keep one, actually, I keep <laughs> one clipped... On my briefcase, right here. <laughs> Just in you case. never know. Oh, These yeah. things can really so my they can come in handy. Yeah, and you you can daisy chain them together in yeah. all sorts of ways. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. You know what I do? I use zip ties to keep my carabiners, carabiners in place. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Uh, those things can save your ass. Uh, carabiners and zip ties. And, and, uh, oh, and that's the name of my turnbuckles. My, that's go. that's the name of my my <laughs> book. Carabiners and zip ties. <laughs> I love it. And turnbuckles. And turn. They're buckles. awesome as well. That word is awesome. Yeah. Uh, let me go. Let's see. I like this one. I'm going to go to uh, Mike. Hey, Mike. Morning, buddy. Oh my balls. Oh <laughs> my balls. What's up, my man? Morning, guys. Okay, so. I'm oh, my balls. <laughs> oh, my balls. Um, I'm retired from UPS. Okay. They used to have this thing for the mechanics called zero road calls. So, you know, if it's something stupid, you kind of help the mechanic out, and they do pretty well. They get acknowledged and stuff. I back into Lockheed Martin up off of Goddard Boulevard by the iFly. Yeah. Um, as I'm backing in, I lose power in the truck. I can't give it any throttle. I realized the throttle cable had broken. So I pop the hood, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, all right, you know, how can I get home? This is literally my last stop of the day. It's going to be an hour before they get a mechanic or a tow truck out. I want to go home. So it's one of the old-style, like, carburetor type with a butterfly on the uh, yes, carburetor. Yeah. I reach down, I, I take off my shoelace, I run it from the butterfly through the firewall. Shut up. Up to where I can, swear to God, <laughs> up to where I can hold on to it. I then drive a manual transmission UPS truck down 202. Whoa. Whoa! With it, with it, so with you're it. driving a manual. So you're shifting gears one hand. I'm you're you're working the throttle hand. with the other one and trying to steer all at the same time. Wait, the best part? I had cruise control. I took the <laughs> I took the shoelace and I tied it around the. Uh, well, I'm not tied, but I like wrapped it around the high beam light, the the headlights. So like I'm doing. 65 miles an hour down 202 <laughs> with a shoelace wrapped around the uh, headlight knob. Wow. Like, whenever, I come up to, whenever I come up to traffic, I just kind of loosen a little bit. And That's your the, cruise uh, control? Oh, my God. The amount of ways that's you, you jury rig a car or a, a truck is, oh is amazing. God. And so that's, to go home. that's yeah. ingenious. Yeah. yeah uh, you did. How many times, Preston, did Kudos you to you, Mike. Thanks. Did you have to reconnect a muffler? Or reconnect a tailpipe yeah. and figure out a way to get those to stay. The muffler thing, I yeah. remember using Constantly. A, a coat hanger. A coat hanger. Um, uh, a zip tie would work pretty well, although it might melt. But um, yeah, yeah, definitely Constantly. some things to, to hold together. <laughs> you know what I, always snapped off, Steve, was the uh, a radio antenna. Radio so, antenna. Duct tape that bad boy oh. back on. And, and you could use a coat hanger. You could That's use what, a coat yeah. You ever see a car <laughs> driving by with a coat hanger sticking up off the hood of their car. <laughs> That's a yeah. That was hilarious. We That's made, a dated concept. That sure concept. is, yeah. yeah. We, we made uh, advancements as a society. Uh-huh. Oh my now you God. just put up a dry cleaning bag. Uh, all right, this sounds interesting. Uh, a couple more calls and we got to take a break. I'm going to go to John. Hey, John, good morning. Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, bud. All right, how'd you MacGyver your way out? All right, so I had a work truck, and I heard this from my father-in-law a long time ago, and he told me that he put packages of black pepper in a radiator because it's pressurized, it will actually stop up the crack enough to where you can get where you're going. So the black pepper will, will naturally go to where where the, the hole is, and and it will sort of congeal and stop the the liquid from streaming out? Yes, because the whole thing is pressure up. Well, so I've heard so, the same thing about like like um, uh, uh, putting egg, an egg in your radiator. I don't know. All right. Where, but, like, peppers and eggs. <laughs> you have a whole breakfast going salt, there. You had something <laughs> happening. So did it work for you, John? Yeah, it did. I went, I had to walk about a mile to 
McDonald's, <laughs> and I got about 30 packs, <laughs> a little pack of uh, black pepper. What did it be today, I, sir? 30 packs of pepper, please. Hey, just, I just grabbed them from yeah. the, uh, you know, the little yeah. spot where you get stuff, and uh, I dumped it in the radiator, and um, that was it. I wow. was able to drive to my mechanic shop, and it, it actually did because it's pressurized. It stopped. Interesting. Stopped the, uh, I think I would have used, right. used a nugget. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Yeah, just shove a nugget in the hole. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, well, interesting. All right, I'm looking at the clock. we got to break now because right. we have to go live on Fox Good Day. I totally forgot about yes. that staying right. on time. But thank you for your calls. And by the way, um, Wayne had said there's some YouTube channels that will teach you how to MacGyver your way. Right. There, there's some uh, aggregators that show you a bunch of different little survival techniques and so on like that. But thank you for sharing. That's some stuff I had never thought of, really. We'll take a break. Come back in a second. Fox Good Day, Bizarre File on the way. Stay with us. Your boyfriend? Come on, man. All right, we're about ready to go live on uh, Fox Good Day in about 30 seconds or so. So I tell you what, we'll hang on. To the, he it was, wasn't on it was, You were very Elvis. I Come was, on, man. I, I was trying to. I was sitting there, I had the microphones on, the music didn't sound like, come on, man. Where's that music at, man? I love that thing. Uh, so we will, we'll hold on to traffic cap. We'll get to that All in right. a moment. We got uh, Fox Good Day in about five seconds. Here we go. Okay, Preston, Steve, and all your listeners and our viewers, here's a question. Well, I want to tell you about this woman. She's 24 years old. She was on a dating app, and the guy said that he was 28, right? Okay. They they met for the date. Uh, and she realized when he sat down and he admitted, uh-oh, I'm 42 years oh, old. Oh, come on. Come on! He got up and left. Yeah. Did she do the right thing? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? I yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys? Because he lied to her. He, yes. He started he out their arrangement, their potential relationship <laughs> with a lie. Not a little lie. A that's big a, lie. That's a big lie. So you're big lie. out of there. Forget it. Has that ever happened to you? Uh, any you? Anybody? I sh yes, family? I showed up at a date, and a guy showed up, and he was seventy-one, <laughs> and I was no. Now I he have known people. Right. I have known people who have lied about their age, and or they they yeah. keep it a hidden, you know, a, a very tight kept secret. Yes, uh, and I've never yes. really understood that myself. But a um, couple if, years, maybe. If, you, if you're out there, if you're if you're going on a date and you're meeting with someone, you got to be upfront right off the bat. You, you just you can't start off the relationship. All right. Lie. Here's my only caveat, okay? See if this is okay with you guys. Now, the guy was 42, she was 24, so that's a reciprocal number. If it happens to be a reciprocal number, I think <laughs> it's think okay. Okay, wow. all right, okay. all right. Yeah. So if she's 89 and he's 98, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yes, that's yeah. okay. Uh, 63, 36. <laughs> there you go, there you go. He's done that. That's what are you happened. About? He's yeah, totally that's... done that. My husband lied when I met the night I met him. So it wasn't a date. We were meeting for the first time. Okay. And he said he was 38. And he was. And then when we, we went to a different bar and they carded him, and he like hedged in a weird way. And it's like, why would a normal human hedge when you're 38? It's because he was 42. Okay, it's not oh. that bad. If he pulls out his ID and that it's horrible. on parchment paper, then uh, <laughs> he takes out a scroll. Yeah, yeah. As bequeathed by King. No, uh, yeah, I, I think uh -huh. it's it's the wrong. Everyone fudges a little bit, but it's wrong right. to just set it. That that's pretty big. That age difference. Yeah. Now yeah. I used to fib about it until Wikipedia happened, yeah. and then I tried to doctor Wikipedia. I would edit Wikipedia. You would edit Wikipedia your own page, Mike. Yeah. Well, my son-in-law <laughs> Russ. He would do it for me anonymously. And then Wikipedia caught us, and uh, we can't do it anymore. Uh, well, well wow. Wikipedia has tons That's of inaccurate great. information. Yeah. Go, have at it. That's Take it out of the swipe it. Day. Yeah. That must be wrong. That's that's how I'm listed as a blues singer. I just, I, I just change it. <laughs> So, Kathy, do you want to say something? Has this ever happened to you? No, it hasn't happened to me. I ruined it for somebody. My cousin used to lie about his age um, by, like, 15 years. He looks way younger than he is. And wow. one night we were out, and I was like, we need a date for my 45-year-old cousin. And and this girl that he had been hooking up with was like, I thought that you were 32. Oh. I was like, he's like, you just ruined that for me. I was like, so sorry. Wow. Oh, God. 
Okay, I'm jealous of you guys and everybody on the crew there because you're heading southbound. Yes. Yeah, we're yeah. leaving right after the show today, headed to Clearwater for Philly spring training, doing a couple of shows oh. out there, and it's uh, like 85 awesome. degrees, but Mike. It's going to be beautiful here, so yeah. we're, we don't even have the ability to brag. Yeah. That's true. It's, they're going to be close to 80 here. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll have fun down there. We'll have the best time. We Thank will. you, guys. Thank you, guys. Take care. Right. Mike and Karen, Fox 29, are good friends, checking in with us this morning. All right, we skipped over, so let's go ahead and take a look at traffic now and see what we are dealing with on the way in. Kath, what you got for us? Not looking too bad this morning. We do have an accident, 95 northbound at Bridge Street. It's jammed back to the Betsy Ross Bridge. The Vine westbound, that's jammed the length. Schuylkill westbound, heavy from Pasheung to the Vine. Uh, north on 95, the Vine Expressway an accident in the right lane. 422 eastbound at Trooper, an accident off to the shoulder. 42 north slows 41 to 55. This traffic report brought to you by Pearl's California grown black ripe olives. They have nothing but sea salt and water. No artificial colors or preservatives for quality you can trust. Look for the sunny yellow can at your local grocery store. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. A couple of quick uh, shout outs before we continue on with the B file. I got this uh, email from Jack McGinty, and he says, hey, guys, he wanted to, he wanted to do a shout-out for uh, our buddy Ryan from the band Sidearm. Yes. Uh, Ryan is no longer with Sidearm. He's left, but uh. he is now playing in what he says is a top-notch U2 tribute band called Mysterious Ways. Uh, he said the band is at the Landis Theater in Vineland. Um, when is this? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, so just hang out. But it's at, uh, and he said, and the St. Paul the Sixth High School Choir from Haddonfield will be joining the band for a few tunes. Well, and I'd love cool. it if you could give the band a shout out. Incredible musicians and even better people. So a quick shout, if you would, please. Uh, it's this Saturday. There that's, we that's go. That's the show is. So uh, that's cool. And we got word that uh, we got to go ahead from uh, Chuck that Sidearm is confirmed to love be it. playing. Those guys the, have to be there. MMRBQ for the Preston and Steve show Side Stage and uh, live band karaoke. So we'll get the details on how you can sign up for that down the road. Side Stage has become now the thing. Yeah, I love it. And then uh, I have a follow-up to a shard out. Now, remember I had a shard out the other day Yes. Uh, from this guy named uh, Andy Duffy. Uh, who had wished his son the best because he had uh, done all this great stuff in track and field, and he left his son's name out of it. Ah, oh. and remember, I was like, yeah, yes, 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 yes. So who's Andy Duffy's it's son? It's Ryan Duffy. Ryan Duffy. So I wanted to make good on that, but he said that uh, they've listened to they they listened to the recording of it over and over when we first uh -huh. did. So now they can listen to this too. Yeah. So. Congratulations to you, bud. Can I give a shout-out? Uh, there's a really nice lady. Her name is uh, Holly Schmutz, which is uh, kind of a funny last name, but that is her last name. We were talking a week or two ago about uh, Julia Roberts movies that have cancer. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of them. When We got a really uh, touching text from a woman who's been going through cancer five separate times, and that's Holly. Oh. And uh, there is a, um, there's a, a way that you can contribute to her... Um, campaign to just to try and get through all it. It's not, it's not a GoFundMe. It's a Be The Match. It's be the match org. Uh, but all that information is up on the community page at PrestonandSteve.com. And, I mean, she's been battling it five different types of cancer, five separate oh times. Get to, yeah. Five different types of cancer? Yeah, and so uh, she's she's in and out of chemo all the time. She listens to our show nonstop. It helps oh, her get through it. Man. And um, the text that she sent was really, really touching. So go to the community page, PrestonandSteve.com, look for Holly's information, and you can make a donation on BeTheMatch.org. Okay, Holly Schmutz. Yeah. All right, Holly, good luck with everything. Hopefully somebody can uh, do something for you. That'd be wonderful. And I want to do one really quickly. I have to thank uh, Philly Mag Weddings. Guys, my wedding is featured in the Whoa, magazine really? right now. Right now? Yeah. That's a little after the fact, but that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how wedding yeah. magazines happen. Oh, maybe. You know, yeah, they come out right. quarterly, like sure. seasonally. Um, but it's right on the front page of phillymag.com right now. So there's some photos. Really? It's been on the front page? On the front of their website. Awesome. Yeah. I want to see and that. And then um, the Philly Magazine, if they're, they're around. They're like free magazines sometimes. And we're on the back page again. Excellent. Um, so there's some photos up there. And uh, guys, it's almost been a year. I know. Wow. It's amazing. Wow. So thank you to Taylor for writing that article. Excellent. All right. We have Bizarre File stories. We're going to share them with you now. Bizarre. WMMR. <laughs> Presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre. Bizarre File. Brought to you by Horizon Services. Get your heater checked and inspected by their pros. You'll get upfront pricing and same day service plus $50 off of any repair. Schedule at horizonservices.com backslash WMMR. Uh, Kathy, you'll like this story. A 12 year old boy reported missing over the weekend was discovered Monday morning. 
He was in an Ohio Target store where he had apparently spent the night that night. Wow, oh, don't you envy that kid? Lucky. <laughs> uh, the child was reported missing by his parents on Sunday. It's believed that he spent the entire night at that location. Um, was his name it. Jace? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't report him missing, though, until the next day. They, yeah, a representative you, you, said it was a runaway situation. Oh, oh all right. Okay. Uh, you remember when a kid and you wanted to run away to a department oh my, store? I would run Actually, away to Target. Actually, yes. Did you? Yeah. Oh, my God, you dude. I wanted to, I wanted to live in the mall if I could. <laughs> I fantasize about what it would be like. When everything was closed and uh-huh. I had it all to myself, it would have been awesome. I still think I could. You could put me in a Target for twenty four hours, and I would be like, like, as far, like sleeping. I could. Yeah, have everything you need. I, I'd get air mattresses. Sheets, you could stay there for a week. Yeah, easily. Yeah. We uh, should try that. So, How long can Kathy go and live in a Target without being noticed? <laughs> There were no reports that the boy was harmed. Uh, staff at the store immediately contacted law enforcement upon arriving uh, and finding the child and cared for him until authorities arrived. Responding officers searched the area, uh, which included a number of retailers for the boy's parents unsuccessfully before handing him off to Children's Services, and he was reunited with his parents. But he got to spend the night in Target. Uh, two Georgia men are accused of setting off a bomb at a woman's home and plotting to release a python to eat her daughter. Setting off a bomb first and then releasing a python to eat the daughter. This is... This is Why would... Couldn't they just use the bomb on the daughter too? This is insanely disturbing. Okay. Uh, uh, authorities say 34-year-old Caleb Kinsey and 37-year-old Stephen Glosser... Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to blow it up and then they send in a python and eat the, eat the daughter. It's kind of like that. They conspired to harass, intimidate, injure, or kill the woman who owned the house. Glosser and the victim allegedly met on a dating app, but their relationship eventually went south, so they decided to block each other, and that's when the other guy, Kinsey, got involved. The men allegedly planned to shoot arrows into the victim's front door, mail her dog feces or dead rats, scalp her head, mm-hmm. blow up the home, and release a large python to eat her daughter. But you need to understand, they weren't compatible. Uh, Glosser found the victim's home and built an explosive device along with Kinsey using Tannerite. Uh, the two then used the device to blow up the woman's house. Boy, you must really like me. Hey, yeah, this is totally changed Oh, my mind. God. Uh, I'm blushing. I didn't know that. Tannerite. A witness told investigators that they saw a black SUV leaving the scene, which was determined to be Kinsey's car. My boyfriend was going to shoot arrows into my house and send dead rats and blow up my house and and just do these horrible things because he loves me so much. Uh, Police served a search warrant on Kinsey and Glosser's home and their phones. Authorities then found evidence of the explosives and Glosser's journal, which had all the stuff in there about scalping and the snake and all that. Guys get crazy. Uh, They have been indicted on a slew of charges, as you would imagine. Well, he showed up at the date and it was 40 Five. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is interesting. The new Kobe Bryant statue yes. outside yeah. of uh, Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles will reportedly be getting an update after multiple spelling mistakes were found. I just don't understand how they're just fi- finding this out. It, Doesn't anyone do a last check before they commit it <laughs> right? to completion? This was the etching. Kobe spelt with a C. This is the etching that was done around the base of the sculpture. On Sunday, basketball reporter Dre Voigt posted pictures of spelling errors that he found on the statue. The mistakes included Raptors guard Jose Calderon's name, spelled Calderson. <laughs> Lakers guard uh, Von Woffer's first name is written as Vom, V-O-M. <laughs> and an erroneous coach's decision, spelled D-E-C-I-C-I-O-N, uh, was on there as well. The Lakers said on Monday that they are planning to correct the mistakes. He is still a busket bill legend. Uh, they said, we have been aware of this for a few weeks and are already working to get it corrected soon. The statue is the first of three the planned tributes to the Man. five-time champion. The statue game has not been good in this country for a while. Yeah. A man was stabbed with a can opener downtown Baltimore on Tuesday. Officers were patrolling when they were flagged down by a bystander who said a man was being assaulted. And when officers arrived, they found 
a 57-year-old man stabbing a 49-year-old man on the top of his head. We assume it was a regular can opener and not an electric. Uh, officers apprehended the suspect, and he is currently in police custody. The victim suffered minor non-life-threatening injuries. He was transported to a hospital to receive treatment for his injuries. You can do some damage with a can opener. Preliminary investigation revealed that the victim was wearing uh, was waiting at a bus stop when the suspect bumped into the victim. Mm. A verbal altercation started, resulting in the suspect repeatedly stabbing the victim with a can opener. I found it interesting that he did it to his head because that's where it's like you the top would of the thing. The can yeah, opener, at least he's so. following protocol. Yeah. Didn't you love using the old style can openers? Oh yeah. yeah. I still do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's we we don't have an electric can opener. Do you do you use the electric can opener? I don't use any can opener. <laughs> But I, I do like, yeah. there's something satisfying. It was just, you're piercing, it was almost sort of sexual. Yeah. Yeah, penetration. Make that and you hear yeah. a little noise. Yeah. And then like a queef, like a can queef. <laughs> and you get it. All right, uh, one last story and then we will move along. A Florida woman is facing burglary and battery charges after she broke into her ex-boyfriend's home and threw Sprite at him and pickled pork juice on his sofa. <laughs> There's a guy she should meet. <laughs> the guy who tried to blow up the, uh, the house. They, I think they're men for each other. A deputy responded uh, to a home after a resident said someone broke into his home. And uh, when officers arrived, they said the woman, identified as uh, Akavia Reddick, who was 22, holding a bottle of Sprite outside of the home when she then flung it at the victim, identif ah! identified as her boyfriend, and hit him. Reddick began shouting at the victim and continuously mentioned wanting to fight him. <laughs> I want to fight I you. Fight you. Uh, as the deputy tried to separate the pair. Before authorities arrived, the man claimed that Riddick texted him that she was coming over despite him not being home at the time. A doorbell camera caught her taking a spare key under the doormat and entering the home. The woman then threw and broke items around the home. Video showed the victim arrive at the residence and confront Reddick. She began shouting at him, throwing pickled pork <laughs> and the juices of the pickled pork onto a sofa. No! Damaging the couch. A shattered glass item was also seen near the washing machine. However, the victim couldn't tell what the item was. Uh, she was arrested for Jeez. battery and property damage. When love goes asunder. When I was a kid, and you guys will find this repulsive, but I, listen, I lived in the South for a while. Yeah. My family's from the South. So they eat weird stuff in, in the Southern states. And so I was a, a fervent eater of uh, pickled pig's feet. You love the pig's feet. I yeah. loved them. Aww. The idea of eating that now <laughs> makes me gag a little bit. And I and so this woman is throwing pickled pork around. <laughs> it's essentially probably what sure. that was. Yeah. It smells so bad. <laughs> it, it, you guys would just, Kathy, you would vomit in I'm vomiting a now. moment. <laughs> I remember I used to be fascinated in the grocery store when you'd pass that stuff. Oh, they're repulsive. Wow. See all the bones yeah. and gristle and people eat that. Yes, yeah, I know. And I used to devour them as a kid. Wow, oh. they, is it anything like chicken wings, like with bones? Or kinda. Okay, kinda like that. Yeah. Only much worse. I, I mean, when chicken wings are great, but yeah, it was just I can't believe I used to eat that. I mean, I really loved them. So you guys know me. I'll try almost anything. Not know. pig's feet, really. That. Pickled yeah. pig's feet. I think I'm out. Oh, really. <laughs> All right, let's take a break and come back uh, roughly, well, less than an hour from now. We're going to have Judge Reinhold on. We're going to talk to him about uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High because there's a screening at the Keswick Theater on Saturday. He will be there for it. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. A little dipsy doo. I had to play that. I like how you say organic asparagus, by the way. Organic Kathy. asparagus. Yes. So asparagus. I saw this... <laughs> No. So organic. I saw this stupid article, but it's interesting in its stupid in its stupidity. Uh, this was I forgot what I, this is up from a Reddit thread, and they were uh, they, they had saw the, the person that wrote this had seen an article about uh, asbestos, and it got yes. them wondering for some reason. Uh, and they did a little research and, and did an interview with a uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor, right? Uh, about things that end up in your lungs via your nose. And so they asked, what would it be like to this ENT doctor uh, if people were to snort everyday substances? <laughs> so Wait, clearly what? somebody was uh, anticipating how they're going to spend the weekend. Oh, and, okay. and, and so if you were to snort various things, because, for example, uh, here's a good thing, uh, actually, in movies, they'll fake snorting cocaine. Correct. And I forget exactly what they use, but it's not. Well, 
That stuff goes into your lungs. Yeah. I mean, you, you breathe that through your nose. Right. It's headed it's headed to your lungs. When you when you snort cocaine or whatever drug, right. that's where it goes, and you get an immediate effect. It goes, like, right into your system. That's why do they you, snort it. That's yeah. why they snort it. Exactly. Do, you know, uh, do we know, Nick, can you see what they use as a substitute for cocaine in movies? Yeah, I will. And the, the thing I was going to bring up in, in conjunction with that, Steve, was that, was that Davon Randolph, is that her name, the one the Academy Yes, Award? yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, they were saying that uh, she... The holdovers. Uh, for the holdovers, she didn't um, like smoking the fake cigarettes yes. that were provided for, uh, so she <laughs> learned how to smoke real cigarettes. Oh, that's not a good idea. I know. Well, she she yeah. couldn't she couldn't uh, for something about the smoker it was just repellent to her, so she had to because it was required that she be a smoker for the the movie. Yeah, and so she started <laughs> smoking regular cigarettes. Ugh. I mean, when we were kids, we snorted pit- pixie sticks and I, things like that. I mean, I, you saw it in a movie. Listen, my friend and I, Ben and I, would just as for whatever reason, we would shoot. You guys know what banaca is? Yeah, oh, banaca, yeah, the yeah. breath spray. We would shoot that up our nose, oh. and Kathy, it would hurt so of bad. Why but, would but you? It, do that? it cracked us up. It was stupid, and and we would laugh at the other's pain. And the one in pain would just be going, ah, and oh we would God. find to that, that funny, too. That's almost like in a, one of the ammonia capsules, you know, when you... When yeah, you, yeah. And, and plus it sort of rush with force. Way up, yeah. So you would li- literally snort pixie sticks. Yeah, I that, mean, we that, saw people snorting oh coke in movies God. and pixie sticks. It was like candy cigarettes, right? Okay. And we're just like, all right, let's try it out. So, and, Steve, in, in movies, uh, the fake cocaine is something called inosodal or inosodal. Uh, cidal. I'm not quite sure what it is, but oh, or I mean how it's pronounced, but it's a vitamin B powder. Okay, that actually gives you a slight energy lift, but right. um, a little less than what Coke would do. Uh, uh, Marissa, do you remember the sensation of snorting pixie sticks and what that felt like? Um, I I feel like we probably no effect. <laughs> no. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I mean it was definitely an instant sugar rush. Yeah, did but it we hurt or anything teens. like that? I think it like I mean it didn't tickle. Okay. It was just up there, and you probably, like, the first time you just snorted a little bit. Do you think you're convincing yourself that you were getting a sugar rush? 100%. Okay, Because we were right. also teens. Teens, right. okay, So, yeah. you know, you already have that adrenaline going already. So the uh, the doctor's name is Florian Bast, and uh, so these are these are the uh, the materials that they tried had, it, see had asked started, him yeah. what what would happen so they started with asbestos asbestos is a, is a, is a carcinogen carcinogenic properties is more that uh, when asbestos fibers get into the lungs then you could potentially develop asbestos asbestosis or you can have uh, you can develop lung cancer or, or mesothelioma which is a type of cancer as well when you snort pure abs- uh, asbestos in a high concentration you can potentially speed up the process but the process to develop any side effects of inhaled asbestos is normally quite slow so directly snorting asbestos uh, can potentially increase the risk of getting lung cancer, but to predict an exact timeline or predict when death kicks in is not possible. So, so the recommendation uh, is, is to po- do it in moderation. Uh, is to not do it at all, but oh. uh, it's potentially survivable. Okay. Um, the doctor freak said, out. He said it's potentially survivable. You can inhale a significantly higher amount orally than snorting it. Uh, because the nose is a filter organism, I can't tell you exactly how much you would get from an inhaled line of asbestos or how much exactly <laughs> would reach the lungs where it could damage the respiratory epithelium and could potentially lead to lung cancer. It's a difficult question. Do you remember uh, the, the, the cinnamon challenge? Yes. Yes, oh, that's that's a similar thing. I and, never and, tried it because that's dangerous for your lungs. It could be dangerous. And in fact, I, I think someone got severely injured. Yes. And, and you know, because there's... Um, uh, asbestos and cinnamon. No, what do they call it uh, when you get something in your lungs? It's not asphyxiation. It's um, oh man, my mom was doing this. She had uh, she had to be intubated because it was causing, and I can't think of the term. Um, anyway, okay, uh, your, your your lungs can handle liquid aspiration. S- aspiration. Yeah, thank you. I had to look it up. Can handle uh, can handle some liquids, but. When when solids get in there, that's when things like it becomes, pneumonia, it can become really, yeah, really bad no, very, yeah. very quickly. Absolutely. So I was a pretty stupid 21-year-old college student one point in my life, and uh, we were in a fraternity. And Steve, one day we thought it'd be fun to start daring each other to snort things. And the thing that I got dared to snort uh, was cayenne red pepper. Oh, oh my God! God! You drew the Shh. short straw. Um, that no, I I was the short straw. Yeah. I, I was the moron that said, oh. "Sure, I'll do that." Oh my God, it Nick! Was, uh, it was 
one of the most painful experiences of my life. It was so moronic, but everybody was, you know, several beers in, and it was thought it'd be funny at the time. And it was funny to everybody else. But you. Not to me. Yeah. Do you remember one of the Jackass movies? Uh, yes. Steve-O snorted wasabi. Wasabi. Oh, my God. That's right. It was. God. Oh, my God. And he's puking and, and stuff. It, 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 not only is it coming out of his mouth, it's coming out of his nose. It was he's, horrible. He's talked, of all the stuff that he's done, he's talked about that as being one of the absolute worst. All right, I so, mean, he stapled his nutsack. Uh, so they asked uh, about snorting salt. Uh, salt is not a hazardous substance like asbestos. If you snort it, you definitely don't die, but you can have significant discomfort in the nasal passage, including nasal bleeding and pain. I didn't get it. It can irritate the cartilage and potentially lead to slightly longer infections in the nasal cavity, but just inhaling salt is not causing bleeding uh, to death. De definitely not. What are some of, some of the other drugs that are commonly um, uh, snorted? Like uh, people, Heroin. Heroin gets snorted. Adderall. Adderall, Adderall. Right? Yeah. Adderall is a big snorting drug. I was at a party one time, and uh, the, uh, people were cutting up Adderall to snort it, and I thought that they were doing coke. I had no idea that it was uh, um, that they were actually doing Adderall. And so you get, like, an explosive rush with that? You get a... No. You get... Um, your attention is fixed for a stretch. Right. Yeah, I mean, right. it's, a, it's a quicker way to ingest Adderall. Uh, the scene in Pulp Fiction where she snorts <laughs> the heroin, she thinks it's cocaine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's very high concentration, and she does more of it than you ev ever should. And uh, that's a tough scene to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Steve, we've been talking recently about misdiagnosis or not diagnosing kids. Uh, when people were snorting Adderall in college, I snorted it, and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I have ADD. Like, maybe I should just be on Adderall. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, you know, everyone's doing it to, like, stay up late and all. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm working very much, very better. Okay. Very, very better. much, very, very better. Very, very better. better. And it really helps with my grammar. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't it's say very I was better. good at school. I just helped. <laughs> this could make me gooder at English. They asked about uh, sugar and what that would do. Uh, same thing as salt. He said, again, it can potentially cause local infections. Nasal discomfort, bleeding, uh, breathing difficulties, et cetera, but that's it. And by the way, you know, he had mentioned getting a uh, an infection, uh, a nasal infection. Man, that can turn really bad. We've talked about the, the triangle of death. Yeah, which yeah. Which is right around your mouth and nose, and you can you can die from the stuff like that. Pierre's going through it. Pierre's was... Yeah. He's got he some to, nasal he had to go thing to going the, on. He had to go to the emergency room because it was so bad. Yeah. There was a. Uh, what I, mean, is I don't it? think he's snorting anything. Yeah, yeah he's, he's snorting Adderall. <laughs> uh, the um, uh, the plastic surgery show. The uh, body botched. I think it is. Yeah. There's some guy who had been doing that excessive snorting of something, and Preston basically his nose had been it had been Michael Jackson down to it, it looked like he had a navel mm. instead of a nose, and so they were trying to rebuild it. Is it true that like it will separate your septum if you do it for yeah. far, far too long? And, like, yeah, that's my understanding. Your nasal passages, passages just become these uh, caves, for lack of a better term. Man, you should see some, <laughs> some of the texts coming in. This is, uh, we would uh, crush and snort uh, Vivrin. Vivrin. Oh, Revive oh. with Vivrin. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which was a, uh, like a caffeine thing, yes. essentially. Uh, somebody said, um, snorting Adderall is called doing Diet Coke. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's what's snuff? Is it just tobacco? Yeah. 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 Okay. And yeah. so you snort that though, right? Like yeah. um, you would chew the tobacco? Yeah, from what I understand, and it it um <clears throat> it would give you a bit of a buzz, like a like a tingle, like a um a, you know, a sharp oh my, I guess burning sensation okay. in your nose that kind of so Yeah, get you all fired up like that. <laughs> Uh, tobacco, here you go. Type of smokeless tobacco that is made from finely ground or shredded tobacco leaves. Uh, may have different scents and flavors and may be moist or dry. Moist snuff tobacco is placed in the mouth, uh, usually between the cheek and gum behind the upper or lower lip. Dry snuff tobacco is inhaled through the nose. All right. May cause chronic pomposity. Yeah, right. Yes, I am. Yeah. It, it looks on later on. Um, next is flour. <coughs> The guy writes, yeah, so the son of a friend of mine in Germany for uh, Halloween went as a, a part of the couple from Pulp Fiction. They snorted flour pretending it was cocaine and they got nasal infections. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the flour can do that because it dries out the nose and then you've got this crusty stuff in the nose. No. And that can lead to an infection if you inhale huge amounts and flour reaches the lungs. You can potentially develop a condition called aspiration pneumonia. But you have to inhale large amounts of the stuff to reach the lungs. So the uh, son of my friend, 
He just had local problems, and he just used a saline wash, and everything was don't, fine after don't that. Don't snort anything. Uh, it, it's yes. crazy, though, that people do. Uh, so occasionally when I use the Neil Med, the nasal rinse, and I have, I have uh, not uh, mixed it properly, I'll get a blast of that up my nose. Yep. And uh, we, <laughs> wow, it'll lift your, your, uh, your uh, skull off. By the way, people are pointing out on uh, text messages, uh, Steve Artie Lang. Artie Lang, Proof yes, of the, uh, absolutely. Because it looks like he, he lost a lot of cartilage. He has no cartilage yeah. in his nose. Is what it looks like. It's flattened out. It's like it's it, you know a boxer that's been punched a thousand times right yeah. in the nose. Um, somebody else had uh, mentioned. Oh, something. look at this top one, Preston. Watch buddies in high school snort ramen flavored powder. Ramen <laughs> powder. <laughs> so what? You don't. You're not tasting that when you snort it, right? You no, could, some of that would. Yeah, it, yeah. it goes through your mouth as well. Not a lot, though, right? Yeah, enough to get a flavor. All right. Mm -hmm. well, let's, let's try it after the show. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. going to try your uh, your pepper thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, not snorting anything is probably a good idea. Now, I know this is what I remember. Suppositories. I was no, yeah. the most disgusting thing that ever ended up in my nose. Which was? Uh, cat diarrhea. Oh, oh yeah. That's right. Oh. You didn't snort it, though. No, no. You, you were free basing. I still, I still have Think a little it. PTSD <laughs> yes. from that. And I'll, I'll retell the story here. You have to. Because uh, my Begins cat. Begins at a farm. My cat bumper uh, was uh, a very affectionate cat, so we'd always rub up against you. And I'm petting him, <laughs> and I didn't notice this. I didn't realize it, but... He had as as when they when they have diarrhea, ended up with some crap on his fur, uh -huh. and I guess I had gotten it on my fingers. God. I didn't <laughs> feel it at all as I was petting him. Oh no! And I just happened to be kind of scratching the inside of my nose, <sighs> and the diarrhea went in my nose. Oh, no. It was. Oh god! Oh god! I could, not. I obviously I could smell it, oh, but god. I could feel it. It was it was gritty. That means it's working. Oh my. god. God, I ran, I told you guys I ran to the sink. Now I don't know what to do. How do I get this? How do I get this feces out of my nose? Oh God! And so doo doo feces. I'm, I'm taking water and I'm putting it in my hand. I'm splashing. I'm throwing it up into my nose and I'm, and I'm you know doing the farmer blow thing, snot rocket. Yeah, yeah. That's so Trying to get out. And there's still more in there. And I'm like, how am I going to get this out? And I actually snorted a little bit of water on purpose going Ugh. to go inward. Oh, so you took it in. And that was really stupid. That's right. the opposite of what you want to happen. You had a, a poop shake. Oh my God, it was horrible. Oh my God. <laughs> horrible. What do you do? And what I would do is I would feed my face into the garbage disposal. Oh. I mean, it's really, it's why you have <laughs> nose hairs because it's supposed to filter out yeah. the crap that you breathe, you know, breathe in and, um, <laughs> do you want Press to, the, I, I want to ask questions, but I also want to just move past your story and okay. never uh, think about but, it again. Uh, if you could, if you could do some sort of coffee table book based on this, I'd like to read it. <laughs> okay. uh, um, yeah, to that point, Nick, since again the Neomed, since I've been using this this nasal flush, I don't. Everyone picks at their nose now and then. I, I virtually never do that. Man, I've had a, a cut on the inside yeah. of my left nostril yeah. for like a week and a half, and it won't heal properly. And I'm just, I can't wait to get to Florida just so there's some, damn some moisture. moisture in the yeah, air. no, because, like, I hear you. This time of year, I never I, get that anymore uh, because of the Neil. Because of the Neil, man. Oh. I'm, I'm, I have the I have the most moist nose in the world. <laughs> you could wring it on out into a cup and drink it. I hear somebody takes and I accidentally smoked a mixture of marijuana and cayenne pepper. Oh. Once. <laughs> Oh my God! I can't imagine what that would be like. I used to I used to uh, punk my my wow. father uh, in his cigarettes. I'd put sugar, you know, um, like most of it would be sugar, but there'd be a little bit of tobacco at the end. Uh, and um, so, oh and sugar really doesn't burn; it sort of melts. Right. But I was after all those years, I was wondering: was that actually was could that have been worse <laughs> than the tobacco? Okay, uh, I'm going to read this. Somebody wrote. Oh no! I accidentally. <laughs> Go ahead. I accidentally licked my baby's poof off my finger once. Oh my god! No, no. <laughs> it says, "Stupid story, lifetime effect." Oh, <laughs> oh my you, you, god! Like you, you, you relive your story, uh, right? Yeah. So that yeah. it is something uh, you will never forget. Wow. Okay. You know. Um, let's go back to the snorting. Right, let's go um, back to snorting poop. So they asked the this uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor, what have you tried to snort drywall? Oh, 
my God. So drywall or any other construction materials, they have various other parts in it like silicas and they can be harmful to the skin. This stuff is normally quite sharp edged. So when you inhale, it can lead to abrasive irritation of the uh, endonasal mucosa and this can lead to bleeding and local inflammation. Yeah, no what kidding. if you try to snort the drywaller, the person installing it? So they're just throwing all kinds of weird stuff out here to well, this guy just for, just for fun to see what he would say. Well, okay. So Nick, you'd mentioned the uh, the, the uh, movie Cocaine, what they use, and it's a, yeah. it's, it's a vitamin B or vitamin D or something like that. Right. Um, so, but do they? Is there anything they would that uh, they would recommend that you do snort? Is there something that's best taken into your body? Good question. By snorting, I've never heard of anything. If there is, good question. I wonder if there is a legitimate medical recommendation, right, for some type of medication for well, you to take nasally right snorting snorting because obviously there are nasal sprays yeah, and, right. and there are things that that you might use i don't know for um i mean we're not talking about just lung problems. Like, like yeah like like a little bit of you know uh s you know sinus medicine or whatever right. is there something that is best a medicine best delivered or anything by snorting when my, when my uh, this is not necessarily snort uh, snorting but when my son was uh really young when he was a, a baby and a toddler he had asthmatic issues and so he would um we had to use this nebulizer with albuterol, and uh, right. basically it um, it mixes with um, water vapor. Right. And you put a bit of a hose underneath his underneath his nose and by his mouth, so we, it, it's for him to breathe in that way. And it's it's medic, you know, he, he's breathing in medicine to bring it into his lungs. Yeah. So, it, but it was not just the nose, but I mean that's medicine through the nose, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hang on, I want to go to Jim. Hi, uh, Jim. Morning, bud. Hey, what's up? Yeah, bud. What's your story? Well, I was at a party back in the day, and they uh, one of the things that the younger crew was doing was you take a beer can, you tip it upside down, you pour a shot in the well of it, and then you snort it. Oh. <laughs> okay, the my, bottom. All right, I got you. My, my choice was uh, vodka iced tea, and... Uh, it gives you a quite a bit of a rush. It's called a chili willy. If you <laughs> a chili willy. So you're snorting vodka. Yes. Well, you can pick any of your liquors, but for whatever reason, I decided to take the vodka iced tea, and it was quite a little. It gave you a little clear, little quick rush. A how, chili how many, willy. How many times do you think chili. you did that? I only did, I did it once. That's all. It takes. Okay. All right. I see a guy flip over in a chair after doing one. So okay. I, I, I got to try this. I, yeah. I, I, I got to do that. I never. Thanks, I never had. I was never a kid who put things up their nose. I never had a I desire to, to nope. snort anything. Mm -mm. A number of people are texting in Steve that uh, Narcan is best delivered nasally. Nasally. Okay, nasally. That's right. yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. So, so you can give a you can give a shot of Narcan. Yeah, correct? it's not you're not snorting it, right? Per se, it's a spray. Um, no, because they're unconscious. It, yes. It's like a spray. In okay, the nose. are Narcan and Naloxone the same thing? Or are yes. they related? Okay, yep, they're the same thing. All right. So then they asked him, uh, "What about concrete powder?" <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, so he said, "One of my colleagues suggested it could potentially dry and set on contact with moisture." And uh, the doctor said, "Yeah, exactly." So you could if, coat the inside of your lungs with concrete. So if you have a lot of stuff, it can potentially dry out, uh, or co with contact with the nasal mucus, it can then harden and potentially block the nasal airway. Can you die from that? He said, "You have to inhale a lot if." Just the nasal cavity is blocked. You still have the oral cavity to breathe. Uh, so I think you won't die of an immediate obstructive airway. Again, concrete can potentially cause other lung diseases. For example, silicosis. Uh, that's also a disease that you can get if you inhale dust. No. And, if, uh, and it could potentially be caused by concrete dust as well. Uh, but that's nothing that leads directly to any fatality. It's a long going process. Do you have air filters in your home? Uh, air filters? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, uh, we have we have them all around the house and uh you know they have the, the UV stuff and so on and so forth. We're not crazy about it, but you know, it's it's an older house and we don't have a lot of a lot of times if you have carpets, which we don't, it's all hardwood, uh, the carpets will kind of catch the dust. Right. But um uh, it makes you wonder, Preston, about years years ago, and even, you know, currently, the dudes who get 
go into coal mines. Yeah. And the black lung. Black like, lung. I got the black lung, Pa. Yeah. I mean, it's still an issue. I got in, the in, black in, lung, I got the, <laughs> In West Virginia. But, I mean, think about all the people that worked uh, on 9-11, you know, yes. with the World uh-huh. Trade Center with it, when that collapsed. All of those people, and not all those people, many of those people had serious lung problems and cancers that developed because of um, the heroic work that they had done. Yeah. All right. They asked him what, what would happen if you snorted snow. Like snow, for like frozen Right, not water. cocaine, yep. snow. Uh, it's not toxic. Uh, he said it is possible to pick up snow somewhere in an urban environment that's got dirt or dog pee in it. Uh, then it's a different story. <laughs> but normally just the cold stuff can lead to a bit of irritation. If you then swallow it, for example, it can potentially lead to a bit of irritation further down the respiratory airway. But it's very, very unlikely to cause other massive symptoms. You don't want to snort New York snow. Uh, and then they asked, what about uh, ground coffee? Uh, if it's ground coffee, it can lead to uh, mucosal damage, Same inflammation, thing. bleeding. Uh, it also potentially might lead to an intensive, quite rapid onset of the coffee effects. So it's possible that by snorting coffee powder, you have a higher dose in your systemic blood flow. But coffee toxicity is so, so high. Uh, you need so much of pure coffee that also it's n- just not possible you'd ha- to overdose. You'd have to grind it down into very... Yeah. Light particulate matter. So then what about coffee enemas? Do they deliver a rush, do they not? I would think so. Right? Yeah, it goes to your into your system quicker, right? I mean, that's com- what that's a whole we're completely forgetting the butt is a way to deliver. Yeah, we, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll explore the butt another time because we need we've a heard proctologist. Of, of like the uh, you know, uh soaked uh uh thing tam- soaked in booze, tampons, yeah. sticking yeah. up your butt and you get a buzz out of it. God almighty, this stuff. What about the 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 trend that was all the rage with the pneumatic air pumps at the gas stations? Yes. Where they were People were dying. There are people that, that look at things and go, I wonder if I could put that in my butt. <laughs> they do. No, seriously. That's, Ask that's any why, emergency room doctor. all those great x-rays. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll bet, bet I can put I that can put in that my up butt. There? Um, all right, they asked him, what about snorting desert sand? Uh, he said it has a lot of abrasive issues. When you breathe in... Snorting desert sand. It can injure the endonasal mucosa. It can lead to low-grade inflammations. If you get it into your respiratory tract, then it can lead to foreign body reactions within the lungs to pneumonia. Uh, but that's it. So that could be really, really bad for you. So um, over time, I wonder if you're someone who snorts Coke. So if someone is an alcoholic, they, they a lot of times they, the, the blood vessels in their nose burst. Does that happen with a with a uh, cocaine addict or someone? Do, oh, yeah. you, do you get that resid that that, that the, the burst? Oh, the capillaries on yes. the outside. It, I don't know. I th- I've, I've seen it only with alcoholics. alcoholics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought well, you were yeah, talking about nosebleeds. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm regular. talking about externally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but what, what we t- we just talked about uh, Artie Lang. Remember what happened to his yeah, nose? Yeah, but you know what? Yeah, but his the cartilage just wore away, so it collapsed. But I don't. It doesn't have that big sort of W C Fields right. bulbous, you know, bursted capillary look like to you, it. You mean prior to it eating right. away at your cartilage? <laughs> I said Sorry. capillary, but I think is it corpuscle? Is that the more proper term? I, Do- Dr. McElwain. I don't know. <laughs> I think you're thinking of Lobster Week. Lobster. Yeah, yeah. It's Lobster Fest. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, the last one they asked him about is talcum powder. So that's what many people assumed in the movies they were doing talcum powder, but that, that didn't seem right to me. Uh, this can lead to respiratory issues. Also, when you inhale these talc particles... Uh, they can lead to inflammation, but mainly of the lung tissue. So it has to go via the nasal pathway, via the post-nasal space in your lungs. There's all sorts of issues with talcum powder, though. The, the uh, uh, people, there's uh, the lawsuits over a talcum powder and and the I guess the yeah, aluminum sir. in it. Yeah, uh, and then it can lead to quite severe impaired lung function. Uh, they can potentially be fatal. Uh, there's a condition called talcosis, so a talcum powder induced inflammation of the nose. But again. This is almost the same as the asbestos. This takes a long, long time to develop, and you have to inhale normally more talcum powder regularly to create this problem. So the the, the ultimate takeaway here is that if you want to be safe, snort Narcan. Yeah, that's right? uh, that's probably the best thing. Yeah, I guess, but I don't know. Uh, hang on a second, one more quick call, and then we've got to we got to take a break. Uh, we will go to Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Hey, what's up, Chelsea? Uh, so I went to Oktoberfest um, in Munich a couple years back and just did one of the standard tours, which I would suggest for anybody if you go. But um, they take you through, you know, this is how you sit down and you get a beer. Um, and we're in this group and they hand out, they're like, 
um, apparently when you drink a lot, um, which maybe we all do, but you don't think of it, uh, your nose gets stuffy the next day. Huh. So they they hand out this, um, it's sort of like a sugar powder with menthol. Oh. <laughs> and literally everybody snorting sugar powder with menthol is what I'm going to call it. Oh. Um, and they're like, maybe don't take pictures of this one for the tour. <laughs> Wait, so, but, so, so, so you're doing it while you're consuming or is it something you do later on before you go to bed? Uh, you're supposed to do it in the morning. So, and the idea is it's sort of a prophylactic way of keeping your nose from uh, stuffing up? Yes. Yeah, okay. Basically. Are they like huh. smelling salts in a sense? Uh, it's, uh, it, it's it's like a sugar powder. Like, it's real fine. Oh. I, all right. I've never heard of that. You snort it. You literally snort it. Mm. When you watch a, a hockey game, when you watch the Flyers, especially when they come back from a, a in between periods and they, they're on the bench to start the second or third, those guys smell, uh, do, do smelling salts under the yeah. nose all really? the time. Yeah. Yep. And it's, yeah. um, it's not every player, Kathy, but you you know you'll get shots of the bench, you know, watching on TV, and it's yeah. they do it just to like get their blood flowing or wake, wake up, up. Or, yeah, like yeah. the actual smell, it, like yeah. the, the stuff yeah. that they would use, because like they use that on me when I passed out a couple of times, yes. and it was this the second time that I was passing out in a doctor's office. I told them I was like, "Give me, give me that. It will work. It will work." And next thing I knew, I was laying down, and that You're was right. under my nose. But it made me. It takes away like the nausea and everything because mm. I when I pass out, it comes with like. No. Oh. Well, feeling like I'm going to oh, vomit. Wow. Okay. And when they do that, it takes it all away. Yeah, Nick, I've been seeing a lot of videos of um, like the, the trainer standing with smelling salts as like college teams go out onto the court yes. or the, the field yeah. or wherever they're heading. And it's like one out of three maybe won't do it, but everybody else is yeah. like, all right, let's go. I put a little dab of the vapor rub now and then, oh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, on your nose. Just a very small bit. And just that little, little what? bit will kind of get me... You know, and you use it for that purpose to kind of yeah. wake up a little bit. Yeah, well, it's, it's just to clear the nasal pass, just that smell. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to rub it on my chest, yeah. <laughs> huh? but I, but I mean, just a very tiny bit, and it really uh, it helps. It reminds me of my grandmother. The smell of that big spit. Preston, yeah. you're my best little boy. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Yeah, because he used to come in and do, he used to do the, the Vicks vapor rub on your on your chest. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, she used it on herself, so I'd smell that. I was I was Ben Gay. All well, any of that stuff. All right, well, anyhow, uh, I thought that was just kind of a weird little question that was asked with some legitimate scientific answers to it. So I uh, thought I would share. We're going to take a break because we have joining us in a moment, Judge Reinhold, uh, who is in town on Saturday for a screening of Fast Times at Richmond High in a Q&A session. We'll be back in a moment with him. Stay put. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thank you very much, Kathy. One of the things I, uh, I don't like about being on the East Coast is we have to make our West Coast friends get up so early in the morning to join us. You feel bad about uh, it. For interviews, but they do it gladly. And we're very happy to have our next guest on because he's going to be in town on Saturday. And at the Keswick Theater, there's a screening of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And he is there for a Q&A and a little chat and some reminiscing. One of the stars of that movie, and we are excited to have on the program this morning, Judge Reinhold yeah. is joining us. Judge, good morning. <laughs> He's got a screaming goat. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually <laughs> borrowed it from my daughter to express how scary it is to be up this early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing yeah. like a screaming no, goat. I, I, I have the exact... I have the exact same goat. Look at it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, wow. No, they're great. Nice. Uh, well, listen, uh, how many years now since uh, Fast Times came out? 42. I Long looked time. it up. 42 years. Yeah, it's amazing. I knew somebody had looked it up. <laughs> 42 <laughs> years. And and I was saying to Preston earlier, uh, Judge, it... it, it um, First off, it's one of the great comedies. It's a, it's acknowledged as one of the great comedies of all time, and um, but it it, it transcends uh, the the generations that have come since then because it nailed it. It nailed it in uh, obviously from the source material, which a lot of people don't know. Uh, Cameron Crowe, the the director and 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 writer, uh, almost famous. That was basically his story, but. Um, he went into a school and kind of eavesdropped on students. He was young enough to pass as a student. And so it, it, I guess that's one of the reasons, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he actually overheard conversations and sort of transcribed those. You're, that's the way the people, were, the kids were talking and the teens at that time. And I think that's why it resonates. Is that is that what holds true to you about why that movie has stood up so long? He kind of left me with nothing to say, but yeah. I... I uh... Uh, yeah, um, 
Cameron masqueraded as a senior in a, a, a San Diego high school. And yes, indeed, he did uh, transpose a lot of the dialogue that he overheard. He re- he'd run into the boys' room and write it down. He wasn't wearing a wire. <laughs> uh, so a lot of that... A lot of that dialogue is right out of the kids' mouths. He he was he was hired to do an expose for Rolling Stone, and then they uh, he made it a book, uh, Fast Times at Richmond High, and we all carried that book around. But that made it special for us to know that we were doing something authentic like that. And in fact, what's really ironic is we're in the Library of Congress. Mm. Uh, as an, uh, I thought, wow, why? And they said, uh, because it's an accurate portrayal of American high school life at, at that time. So I, I agree. I we think we all agree. That's what resonated. I remember watching the movie, and it's like uh, years prior to that. I remember the, the show Leave It to Beaver was one of the first shows that sort of understood how brothers talk to each other a little bit more than your at- sitcom of the time. And watching the exchanges in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, I was like, this is how I, I, I talk with my friends. This is the stuff that I'm worried about or concerned about at the time. And uh, now you were you were a bit older. When I, you it's were funny you say Leave it to Beaver because that was a real influence on me when I was doing the movie. I thought, wow, yeah, this is a lot like Leave it to Beaver. Yeah, you're right. I mean, your, your your relationship with uh, with uh, with uh, Stacy, your sister, uh, Jennifer uh-huh. Jason Lee. I think. Oh, that, that's a lot like Leave It to Be, right? Uh, and that's but that's the heart. You guys rib each other, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there's that. There's that. Uh, it's one of the the best scenes in the movie where she she goes for the. If, if Leave It if. If Beaver was naked, I guess that would be. <laughs> I don't know if we want to see Jerry Mathers naked, but if, if Beaver uh, had to drive yeah. his sister to the abortion clinic, then <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Though that's, I would, I'd pay to see that. Yeah, but that's that's a touching scene that you know. Um, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when the movie came out, and I remember this, it was people were kind of thinking, okay, this is going to be kind of like a Porky's thing, and this is a teen sex comedy, and um, they they weren't they didn't quite know what to expect or how to react to it. Correct. Well, the kids uh, seemed to really like it right away. I didn't. I don't remember any apprehension about it. Uh, I I felt like. Well, I I we we just felt special because we we knew the source material. I thought America. I, I thought maybe I was in a, an American graffiti more than I was in a Porky's because right. American Graffiti took place over one night and we took place over one school year. But, uh, yeah, Porky's, that was a, I guess that was 1980 or yeah. something, yeah. How, how how important, Amy Heckerling is amazing, the director and, and, and writer, uh, you know, as, as well, she wrote Clueless. How how important and how, how cool was it to work with her? <laughs> I think the reason why the movie works as a comedy and just uh, as a, as a accurate depiction as well is that the uh, the marriage of the two sensibilities of Cameron and Amy's it was just that was the magic really the two of them. Amy was kind of a uh, she didn't this wasn't her agenda but she was kind of a sexual renegade for that time. And uh, she was she was perfect for it. Mm. And the the producer, Art Linson, who is now uh, a legendary producer, he brought them together. So a lot of that that was that was Art's doing. And he went on to do The Untouchables and Fight Club and all these amazing movies. But that was early for him. He'd only done a movie called Car Wash. Oh, yeah. Sure. (laughs) I love that movie. Yeah. but he brought them together, so and uh, that's I, I really think that's the secret behind it, you know. Judge, when you've got a movie like uh, Fast Times that just becomes, you know, what it is—a juggernaut. It's a classic. Uh, everybody's got their favorite scene, um, we, and we've known forever that the most rewound scene of all time, uh, for the longest time, was when Phoebe Cates takes her top off. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's a classic moment in uh, uh, in 
movies. Uh, my favorite scene, however, though, was also involved you, and it's it's when you have the pirate hat on and the good looking girl sees you, and you just you you perfectly play it. I am done with this. You just you crumple it up, you throw it out the window. That's it. I just thought it was brilliantly played. Your facial expressions are awesome in that. But I wanted to ask you personally. What was your your favorite scene, if you can uh, name one that you liked as a as an actor working on the set? And then, what is your favorite in viewing the film? I think when I get fired at Old American Burger because it's kind of what everybody wants to say to the um, to the jerk customer, yes. and uh, you know, but you don't, um, and if you do, you get fired. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's your goat. I'll put it that way. Um, yeah, that's that was that was that was pretty satisfying, and it apparently is pretty satisfying to a lot of people because a lot of people come up and say, "Oh, I wish, I want to say that every day." You know, yeah, want to kick one hundred percent of your yeah. ass. And that that right. actor, right. that actor yeah. was the perfect dick to do that. And yeah. and, and I kid yeah. you not, not a, any time I hear the name, we have a caller named Brad. So he's Brad, yeah. Brad, because that whole exchange is so iconic. Right. Yeah, I I enjoy that scene. I enjoy doing that scene. Is it the scene you enjoy watching the most? Oh. Uh, I, I I don't sit there and wait for my scenes. It's, it, it's, it, it's a funny relationship I have with the film because at first you're so close to it, and then it really takes years to be able to sit back and enjoy it and say, yeah, this is, this is a funny movie. Right. So your relationship with the film changes, evolves over time. Right. You know, and, and, and I now I feel pretty dis distant from it. And I, I can say, wow, this is well paced. And, and this really works as a film. It, it seems like it might be a, a standard arc for, uh, for somebody who has a success in an earlier project and they, uh, they appreciate the success of it. They want to move on. They want to do other things. And then over time circle back and go, Wait a minute, that was pretty damn special and, and can go back and acknowledge how great it was, you know? If it is, yeah. Yeah. You had so many, uh, the cast, Forrest Whitaker, Eric ah. Stoltz, Nicolas Cage, Sean Penn, Ray Walston, Phoebe Cates. Um, and then um, as the Spicoli character working with Sean Penn, this is at the beginning, um, you know, did you, did you, what was his approach? Was was he method at that time? What, what was it like working with him, you know, because... That's right at the beginning when he's, I think, probably finding his acting chops. Nobody knew who he was, and we couldn't figure out whether whether he was a character actor who just played surfers. <laughs> you know, who was where? Where did the actor and where did where did the actor end and where did Spicoli begin? Uh, we Sean. Uh, really made no appearance until the end of the the movie. And then he turned into this very articulate, uh, area day, <laughs> insightful guy. And, uh, it, it was, it was quite surprising and he really did keep it up. And what was so funny is the girls, they didn't like Spicoli. They, he's obnoxious, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he, he didn't care. Right. He didn't care. Uh, you, but I the first time that I saw him was when he rolled out of that van in the parking lot. All that, right. was the first time. that was my introduction to him. Oh so. my God. It's a classic scene. That's well, the, the scene, and it was the scene. So when he dropped that finally, was the last scene filmed for yeah. the movie, the Mighty Mart scene, the uh, the actual end of the movie? Well, yeah, uh, it's great you brought that up because I think it's fascinating how that happened. They, they all had us at the prom. The prom was the last scene. Okay. Okay, and then I have a feeling Verna Fields, not to get too far out, but Verna Fields was the hero of Jaws, and she went on uh, as an editor, and she really saved, he, he credits, uh, Spielberg credits Verna with saving his butt a lot. Um, she cut Paper Moon. Uh, she was just a rock star editor. And so Universal very rightly made her a supervising editor over all of the, all, over all the projects. And I think it might have been her idea to say, you know, let's leave Brad at the Mighty Mart. He's not at the prom. And it's just a, a more 
exciting way to end the film and i oh, just thought that was brilliant you know it's perfect but, also to give you yeah. to give your where everyone has gone to and and also your moment of triumph because you are the put upon character in this you're the everyman That's you're right. the everybody who's like oh the plans all the great plans that fall to hell and you're, yeah. you're trying your best right. but you get that win yeah it's a really uh brad's Story is a series of humiliations. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so it really is his redemption at the end. Yeah. Um, with the, uh, so uh, just to remind people, the Keswick Theater, the screening is going to be on Saturday. Judge will be there and uh, and obviously talking about the film. Uh, besides this, we it's do. It's really fun. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, it's all good. I, I, well, I just, it's so much fun to be able to. Uh, entertain people with behind the scenes stories for people that really uh appreciate the film you know because yeah. it's been this and, movie has uh, been dissected I love doing it. yeah this is one of those movies that lends itself to this to have someone who has the insight because it's not just simply appreciated it's savored it's dissected it's quoted there are iconic scenes right. and it's the kind of thing people want to feel that connection to it because it helped it helped people get through those years and continues to do that yeah, that's great. Yeah, I like that. I think that's true. I also did want to ask about uh, Beverly Hills Cop because um, not that long ago, saw the trailer for the next film. And, right. And, and on, on surface of, well, I don't know, do, do we need another Beverly Hills Cop movie? Saw the trailer. Every single one of us came in here. We're like, did you see this? <laughs> They're going in a really cool direction with this. It looks pretty awesome. So uh, I'm excited about what the future holds. And not only you in it, uh, John Ashton is in it, who played Taggart. So the, the crew's back together. Um, are you excited? It, oh, it's a great cast. Uh, I love those guys. It, it, I feel like we're in a rock band. Yeah. By this time. Paul Reiser is one of them. Uh, Bronson uh, Pinchot is one of them. And uh, just all of us together, I, yeah, I feel like we're Eddie's backup band, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and we all know our job and and uh yeah i needed another beverly hills cop movie i know you didn't but <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 no i begged you so so that we talked about we need this one we it, do. It, it, it looks it, good and i want to ask good. you judge about that about uh, casting directors and they, they, they've announced at the academy awards that they're going to be presenting award for casting um, mm -hmm. so, and, and you and Beverly Hills cop, your, your character, I might have said this is a, a role for you, but, but you, you, it, it's perfect. And you as, as, as Brad is, 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 is perfect. Um, how, Im, how important is that process and, and how, I mean, cause I understand Nicholas Cage almost had the role sewn up of Brad, but he was too young. But so somebody, yeah. somebody saw you and said, yeah, he's got it. Well, I lived up, uh, I lived up above Amy Heckling. I was in the apartment above it. And so it was made it harder for her to recognize that she'd see me take out the garbage and stuff. And it made, <laughs> it made it harder for her to really realize that I could do it. And then once she thought that I could, she brought me in. But I, the masquerade was that I wasn't supposed to let on that I knew her because she said that, uh, art wouldn't take me seriously if, if, uh, he knew that we were friends. So I had to pretend that I didn't know her. And uh, it was tough because everybody, and rightfully so, really did want Nick. Yeah. And, and, and I understand why, but uh, because he was 17 and not yet 18, uh, it would have messed the schedule up because you still had to, you still had to work him in child hours. Ah, uh, yeah. That's, that was the reason. Judge, I wanted to ask you uh, about your appearance on Seinfeld. Uh, you know, there were a lot of TV shows that people sort of went back to uh, during the pandemic and rewatched again. And, and uh, for for me and my fiance, Seinfeld was one of them. And uh, you got nominated for an Emmy for your guest role, which was remarkable. But there's something um, inherently sweet about the close talker character. What you were trying to do the whole time was just be nice to people. And in a show with characters who were really reprehensible people, you were kind of like this outlier of a, of a nice guy. What was your um, impression of, of that character, of being on the show? And it, it was just a one-off for you, but it, like, it was kind of a lasting uh, character for a lot of other people, myself included. Um, oh, 
Can I just get a glass of water? Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, is this for you or the goat? Huh? <laughs> is the water for you or the goat? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Got to wet his whistle here. All right. I'm sorry, sir. That's okay. I did, <laughs> sir. Did the question it make sense? Like, it, it tasted like toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> there you so, go. So uh, the close talker. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, Aaron was very, uh, what I loved about it, I think what we we all laughed at the table read was he he is a friendly guy. He is a sweet guy. And then he turns out to be insane. <laughs> uh <laughs> Usually you equate, at least in movies and stuff, insane people with dangerous people. And um, Aaron's not dangerous, but he is insane. He does turn out to be crazy. Were you surprised by the Emmy nomination for for that role? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> I, I don't get the impression you're, you're full of yourself when it comes to stuff like this. You, you, you all take it with a grain of salt, correct? Oh, well. No, I just wasn't expecting that. Yeah. And, uh, um, oh, I, yeah, I'll tell you uh, something funny. Uh, Martin Sh uh, Martin Sheen ended up winning it that year for Murphy Brown. And uh, a Paul, the great Paul Dooley, uh, I was up with him and I thought, wow, uh, I could lose to Paul, but Martin isn't necessarily known for his comic work, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, but then... He wanted his, which is sometimes the case with the Emmys, and him being the the. Uh, well, he it's like he had seniority, but it, years later, years later at a party, uh, after he'd done the West Wing, I said, "Hey, you know, uh, congratulations on your Emmy for best uh, guest uh, star in a comedic seed." Uh, series and he said what <laughs> and i said yeah you know you won you won that year i i was up oh there. man i did <laughs> and i said yeah and he said, oh i, I can remember i you know he's got a whole yeah whole self emmys and and i said yeah, well, of course you wouldn't. And he said, hey, do you want it? <laughs> you want it? And I said, well, it's kind of not, it's kind of not the same. He's the sweetest guy in the world. I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I did he didn't even know he, you know. Oh, God. Oh, That's it. hilarious. Do you want it? <laughs> I mean, kind of. Do you want it? Yeah, yeah but it, want, he meant it. By the way, <laughs> isn't that, isn't that illegal with the awards? Or maybe it's just the Oscars that you can't. You can't give your. Uh, in fact, they kicked some guy out of the the union for for I think giving away his Oscar or selling it or something. Oh like that. wow! Yeah. Oh, it's a good thing that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to have killed Martin uh, Sheen's career. Oh. Um, the, the, the famous critic Pauline Kael uh, is reading um, that she had described you as a cross between Jimmy Stewart and Donald Duck, which I know was. I mean, to get acknowledged, I, there's a great documentary about her. Uh, but uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, oh, great. yeah. And uh, just a you know, a legend. I mean, when you end up on somebody like that, when you end up on their radar, it's got to be like a double take moment, correct? Oh, it was amazing that she chose to write about the movie, and we were in the New Yorker, and uh, I didn't mind the Donald Duck. I, 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 I totally got it. I thought that was a. Uh, a brilliant way to describe me. She she also said, "I know this by heart, of course." <laughs> the uh, the young man with the old man's name. Yeah, yeah, it's Judge Reinhold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That that was pretty. That was pretty cool. Who who amongst the cast members do you? Uh, obviously, we're talking decades, but who who remains closer to your uh, your circle? And the the guy who plays Arnold uh, Scott Thompson. Uh, he and I were friends before. We were friends with Amy. Uh, Amy's pack was, well, Marty Brass was part of that group, and Stuart Kornfeld, who went on to uh, produce all of... Uh, um, no, not Will Ferrell. Oh, excuse me, Ben Stiller's movies. And uh, let's see who else. Oh, John Landis was kind of around okay it was a pretty it was a pretty fun group oh, yeah. anyway scott and i yeah scott and i were always uh, already running together so 
Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, we kept up, yeah. Speaking of old friends, I, I, I don't know. There's someone on our phone lines that's on hold named Tom Keen that says he's an old friend of yours. Does that name ring a bell to you? Uh, uh, from where? <laughs> I don't know. We, 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 we can, I know. We can <laughs> take the... You want to want to ask? Do we do I, it? Yeah, uh, well, I, I think, you know, I grew up in Wilmington. I would. I think it, it might be uh, a friend from uh, Wilmington. Right. I grew. I was there until I was fourteen. So. All right. Should, should I pull him up on the on the phone lines and find out? Well, I'd love to get his information if if that's okay. <laughs> Absolutely, sure, we can do that. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, get get uh, Tom's uh, info. Judge, yeah. he emailed him. Uh, he emailed me last night. Uh, I said, uh, give a give a call if we want. Uh, we'll see if we can go to you. Um, but I'll email uh, your your lovely wife Amy, and, and we can connect <laughs> you guys that way. Thank you. I'd love to talk to her. <laughs> and uh, yeah, w w how long were you in uh, Wilmington? Uh, where, where, where your whole Until childhood? I was four. My father worked for the Dupont Company as a he was a lawyer. He was an arbitrator, so he'd settle disputes between labor and management. And uh, uh, we he retired when I was fourteen, and we moved to his old farm in Virginia that he'd always had. So. Uh, it was it was that was that was quite a transition from yeah, absolutely. That, I know. Yeah, I, I mean, was, <laughs> I was bussed back in time actually <laughs> to the county school. I had hair down to my shoulders, and uh, uh, everybody was in agricultural schools and stuff. And uh, yeah, that was that was a tough transition. That was tough. When how did you make the the jump to the acting career? Did you go the New York route or did you go the California? No, I, I followed a, a girl I had a crush on into drama school, into drama after school drama class at uh, my sophomore year there in Virginia and uh, had a wonderful teacher. And so that's, I, I felt more comfortable on the stage than I did in hmm. my life. Uh, and so uh, I didn't, feel like oh i found my calling but i just love doing plays and that uh i got a job at the burt reynolds dinner theater is one of the first apprentices there oh in jupiter and, yeah 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 wow yeah, and yeah yeah if you had a walk-on part and then you serve drinks at intermission, you could maybe walk away with a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, did Bert himself come down uh, frequently? Oh or? yeah. He directed shows. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, there's yeah, a, he directed shows down there. There's a larger than life character. What, what, what any, any yeah. takeaways, any memories uh, that, uh, stand out? Uh, Dom DeLuise was hilarious. <laughs> uh, and we had Charles Nelson Riley. People don't, you know, if they think of him if they're of age on, of uh, somebody on Hollywood Squares, but uh, he was a really a brilliant director, and he directed Julie Harris and Vincent Gardenia and uh, Wow, A Death of a Salesman. I, I it was really an amazing experience for me, and uh, I got to know James Best. And Sally Fields did Bus Stop. Bert directed them in Bus Stop. Wow. And, you know, Jimmy went on to do the Dukes of Hazard, And it, Jimmy wasn't like that at all. He, <laughs> he wasn't. He, he was much more serious than that. Anyway, uh, several of those actors said that they thought that I had promise and that I should uh, move to L.A. And really, the, the only decision, uh, the only thing that I... Uh, pointed to LA was, well, I'm going to be so poor that I can live outside. I can sleep outside in LA. I can't right. sleep outside in New York. That's great. You know, I was thinking the worst case scenario. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but as it turned out, Animal House had just come out. And so there was this whole new genre of uh, wild and crazy guy comedies. And I, I was in stripes not too long after I got to LA. So I was really, really lucky. Uh, no. I rode that wave in. Man, what a wild thing to be amongst because I forgot, yeah, Burt Reynolds' list of friends and people mm. who, who played there. I mean, you were uh, in, in an improbable place. You were surrounded by some of the greatest actors around. It's pretty wild. It was wild. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It was, it, yeah. Wow, <laughs> it was a great time.
Obviously, Judge has got plenty of stories, and uh, that's what uh, it's going to be Saturday night at the Keswick Theater. I actually have some tickets uh, to give. Uh, I can take uh, caller number 18, and you will be able to go to the Keswick Theater. It's on Saturday night. Tickets are on sale now, uh, and it's an evening. It's a screening of the film. Are you, I assume, screening first, and then you're going to talk to the crowd, or does it work the other way around? Well, no, I, I like to introduce it and okay. tell some stories that will help give people a dimension uh, when they're watching the movie, because most of the people have already seen the movie. So I, I like to tell them some stuff to look for, uh, makes it more fun. And, and then afterwards we have a, a Q and a, it's great. It. I mean, this I is it. such a, such yes. a great movie and you, and you are a critical part of it and, and your, your stories and storytelling is, is, uh, you know, uh, at a uh, pro level. Yeah. So I think people are going to have a great evening. Thank you so much, you guys. Absolutely. Uh, and and come back down and see Wilmington while you're here. We're at the old <laughs> <laughs> stomping ground while you're down this way. No, that's what we plan to do. That's the Excellent. plan. Awesome. All right, Judge, thanks for checking in with us. We appreciate oh, it. Good luck with everything. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. You got it. Judge Reinhold, yeah. guys. Saturday night at Keswick Theater. And, uh, yeah, tickets on sale now. And you're right, man. That movie was was loaded with so many... I mean, Forrest Whitaker. The, the, the people, Forrest people, Whitaker! Forrest Whitaker, Sean Penn, both Oscar winners, right? Yeah. In this movie. And, uh, and yeah, and Nicolas Cage. Oscar winner. say anything yeah. at all in the movie. He's uh, he's one of the... Uh, the shirtless guys. He's one of Penn's boys. Yeah. As so. was Eric Stoltz. Yeah, that's a great movie. Wow, that's cool. All right, well, listen, I think we should take ourselves a break and come back in a moment. We'll give away those tickets. When we return, we will get to the bizarre file, so make sure that you stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Preston and Steve on 93. Well, Thank you. Traffic on 93. WMMR. Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Preston and Steve's Bizarre, bizarre File. And it is brought to you this morning by Dermatology Associates of Plymouth Meeting, recruiting for a non-segmental vitiligo study to test an investigational medication. Adults 18 and older can register. Go to PlymouthMeetingDermatology.com. Police say that an 11-year-old boy is admitted to bringing pot brownies to school and sharing with his classmates. Oh, that little whippersnapper. Prompting one to be taken to the hospital for a medical evaluation. Uh, now we snort Adderall. Uh, police were called to campus at about 7.30 a.m. after receiving a call about a student who may have brownies containing THC. A little wake and bake that particular <laughs> sure. day. Uh, they were able to track down an 11-year-old student who admitted to bringing the brownies in question from home. I bet that, you, that was a mellow show and tell. The student also allegedly admitted to passing out brownies to other students. One of the kids apparently ate some of the brownies and had to be taken to the hospital for a medical evaluation. What, a teacher can't get a brownie? Uh, the student who is accused of bringing them has been referred to the county juvenile court for minor in possession. They were later released to their parents. Uh, they are investigating where the brownies came from and how the 11-year-old came into possession of them. So I don't know if the <laughs> was intent <laughs> was to bring them to, you know, knowing that they were right. had pot in them or not. They could have just grabbed brownies from the kitchen not knowing. Don't really know. Really, parents, please separate your pot brownies from yeah. your regular brownies. Yes, label them yeah, properly, yeah, yeah. please, if you would. A Nebraska teen was in a hurry Friday to see his special gal. Around 9.30 p.m., deputies pulled over a Kia Sorento that was caught doing 117 miles per hour in a 55-mile-an-hour zone. Oh, someone had a boner. In West Omaha. Yeah, the driver, a 17-year-old, said he was, quote, rushing to meet his girlfriend during a work break. <laughs> the teen was cited on suspicion of speeding and not having a valid registration, and he is facing a fine of about three hundred and twenty. So they don't waive highway speed limits if you're... If you're going to get laid? Yeah. I guess they, they don't. I've never tried that argument, so... A man has been jailed after deliberately ramming cars at speeds of 130 miles an hour wow. while high on drugs. Ah! Gavin Binning was on a cocktail of cocaine, cannabis, and alcohol when he drove his silver BMW 125 like a, quote, absolute lunatic on the M3 freeway. This is in England. 
Uh, viewing himself as the enforcer of good driving, <laughs> he deliberately crashed into what he considered bad drivers during a 30-mile rampage on the busy motorway before he was arrested. Well, thank God someone's looking out for us. He shunted the backs of nine cars, so he rammed into them. Nine yeah. cars. Bad driver! Uh, during the half-hour spree of destruction, after which he punched the air in triumphant victory, according to the court. Uh, like Judd Nelson. Uh, Bining, Bining even tried to uh, grab or damage the side view mirror of a car, according to one witness. Bad mirror! One of his targets was a mother of three. Her name was, her last name is Terry. Mrs. Terry said that she felt an impact at the rear side of her car. She described seeing the silver BMW behind her and he was repeatedly, deliberately ramming the rear. She pulled up into the middle lane in an attempt to get away from him, but he followed her and rammed her Jeez. again. The woman pulled her Tesla into a hard shoulder and the silver BMW got away. Biding told police that his rampage was a once-in-a-lifetime moment after years of bad driving of other people. He couldn't take it anymore. Through tailgating, lane hogging, and driving slow. And he added, quote, I want to open I want to open up everyone else to keeping the outside lane clear. Another driver said he had never seen such dangerous uh, substandard driving. Uh, the prosecutor told the court that he described the defendant uh, to be like driving like an absolute lunatic and was shocked that he didn't kill anyone. One driver, Lee Toswell, uh, thought that he was about to die when Biting crashed into the back of his vehicle, which spun him around to face oncoming traffic. So he did like a teeth stop. That's crazy. I uh, think his quest for justice was clouded by the drugs. Maybe. So apologizing through his lawyer, uh, Biting said, I don't know what happened to me that day, and I don't know why I was so stupid that my remorse did, remorse did not appear when interviewed. Uh, he said that uh, Binding, his lawyer said Binding takes full responsibility for his actions. Uh, he will be handed a nine-year sentence and will serve six of them in custody. So dude's doing some time for that, obviously. Uh, this is terrible. And one of those moments where you're like, man, you just had no shot at it. A person was killed Monday morning in Pennsylvania when a tree fell into their house. Come on. So they were inside the yeah, house. what are you going to do? Uh, the coroner confirmed the victim was 45-year-old oh. Scott Quickle of Gardner's, Pennsylvania. Two others were able to escape uninjured from the uh, South Middleton Township home. Crews were dispatched at about 3.10 in the morning, and fire officials said that uh, they were on the scene for about three hours. The home is a partial loss. <laughs> And then we'll do just uh, one more story, and we will wrap it up. A male humanoid robot in Saudi Arabia was captured on video, apparently touching a female reporter's butt. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh, the robot named Muhammad the Humanoid Robot. Nice software. Made his debut at Deep Fest last week. Deep Mo Fest. Yeah, Mohammed was built by Saudi robotics company QSS and speaks Arabic and English. And during a presentation, Mohammed appears to touch reporter Wayawa Kazim's backside. Cop and a feel. Uh, she gives the robot a stern glare and raises her palm before continuing. Yo, yeah, baby. Uh, social media users accuse the robot of touching the woman inappropriately. Uh, QSS says that it has reviewed the footage and will prevent anyone from getting close to the robot within its areas of movement as well. <laughs> Why would you design a sexual assault robot? Yep. And that is the last story in the Bizarre File for you this morning. All right, we are going to take a break. I do want to remind you, we have a secret text word. And Kathy, I think it's time for us to get a winner. So what number caller do you want to take? Five. All right, fifth caller at 215-263-WMMR. We got some Brad Williams tickets that are up for grabs at Ovation Hall in the Ocean uh, Casino Resort in Atlantic City on October 19th. Tickets go on sale Friday, by the way. So caller number five, you know the secret text word. Give us a call right now and let us know. We'll be back in just a moment. Some more goodies for you. Stay put. Preston and Steve on 93. Yeah. <laughs> 93.3 WMMR. That is Jelly Roll. Ah. Uh, the song is called Dead Man Walking. I like the flavor of that. That's my first time hearing that. So, uh, guys cranking out some good tunes. About two minutes after 10 o'clock. Today's a Wednesday morning with the President and Steve Show. Day is zipping right along. Uh, we're on our way to Florida as soon as the show is over. And tomorrow morning, broadcasting live from Clearwater, the ballpark. And then on Friday in uh, North Clearwater Beach, uh, broadcasting from uh, Coco's Crush. And uh, we'll be reuniting with Casey by then. Uh, he is gonna. We're gonna. He's gonna meet us at the airport. Today. Yes. 
and uh, the family's all back together again. We can't be. We left on vacation without him, and yeah. we're correcting that. Yeah. All right. Today's lesson question. No, not lesson question. Uh, secret text word. We'll do that first. We were looking for caller number five, and it's Joe, who happens to be caller number five. Hey there, Joe. Hey. Good morning. All right, Joe. Our secret text word, please. Is degenerate. Yes. <laughs> degenerate. That is correct. I want you to hang on the line. We're going to get your information, and we are going to give you tickets to see Brad Williams, who is playing Saturday, October 19th at Ovation Hall in Ocean Casino Resort, Atlantic City. Tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. via theoceanac.com. And our random texter was Brian Martin yes! of Mullica Hill, New Jersey. So congratulations to you, Brian. You'll get the tickets to go see Brad Williams as well. All right, today's lesson question, the prize we have to give away. Four pack of tickets for the 25th annual Greater Philadelphia Boat Show, which is this weekend, by the way, 15th through the 17th. And the question we'll ask this morning, we were talking about uh, what food items we keep in our car for an emergency. What does Steve keep in his glove compartment? 215-263-WMMR. If you heard that earlier and you know the answer, by all means, give us a call right now. In case of an emergency, what food item does Steve keep in his glove compartment? 215-263-WMMR. While you do that, we'll do this. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you by Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. Get free seeding every year. Call 800-FREE-SEED-NOW. Uh, what's happening this morning, Steve? Well, Ghost Adventure star Zach Baggins dropping $160,000 on a Paolo Benchero rookie card. Baggins plans on displaying the card in his Vegas Haunted Museum as the one thing worth anything at the Haunted Museum. Nice. <laughs> Kanye West's crazy wife Bianca Sensori is back in the United States and back to displaying her full exposed backside in public. Even Sensori admits that unless you ooh and ah each time you see the crack in the Liberty Bell, her naked ass is no big deal. Yep. <laughs> I like that. And finally, Doja Cat announcing she's departed Instagram, saying it has impacted her mental health. Doja Cat says she plans on getting away from it all and spending some time on Facebook. All right. <laughs> That's your Hollywood track. All right, we will see if you do indeed know the answer to the question. Uh, in case of emergency, what food items Steve keep in his glove compartment? And we will go to Tito for the Tito. answer. Yo, Tito, good morning. Hey, what's going on, Preston? That would be a rotisserie chicken. Rotisserie yeah. chicken. Hang on, buddy. You just got yourself some tickets. We'll give you four of them for the 24th or 25th annual Greater Philadelphia Boat Show this weekend, March 15th through the 17th. And that's at the Expo Center at Oaks. Uh, you can get tickets. Visit phillyboatshow.com. All the details right there. Uh, why did that not work? Hang on a second. Let me try this again. Hang on. No. Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! Yeah! Can't you give me a straight answer anymore? I do have some things to share, and we'll begin with this. Slash has confirmed a North American tour this summer in celebration of his uh, love of the blues. Jimmy! And Jimmy will be joining him. No, actually, it kicks off on July 5th. <laughs> Slash has curated an all-star blues lineup to join him, including, and I will be honest, there are several names here I do not know, but Eric Gales, Warren Haynes Band, All right. uh, Keb Moe, Robert Randolph, Samantha Fish, and more. And he has named it the Serpent Festival, an anagram that stands for Solidarity, Engagement, Restore Peace, Equality, and Tolerance. <laughs> To bring fans together to celebrate Serpent. the spirit of the blues and to perform with other blues artists that he admires who shares his love of the genre. You, uh, you know Robert Randolph Preston? No, he, not so by plays, name. Uh, what's um, the instrument? A steel guitar, but like it's a lap steel guitar? Dulcimer? Is that what it's called? No, like a lap, no. a, a steel guitar, but... Um, a lap steel. Lap steel, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. He plays that. And okay. uh, I've seen him open for Dave Matthews a couple of times. He's enormously talented, great musician. 
Um, and uh, I think I saw Kit Moe actually open for Dave Matthews as well. But okay. anyway, uh, Larkin Poe's on the bill, too. Hey. Yeah, which is perfect because she plays Lab Steel in uh, Larkin That's Poe, right. too. That's so, right. Uh, the show nearest to us, and if you see something else, Nick, let me know. But uh, August 5th in Bethlehem. At Music Fest. Oh, okay. Is what I have, yes. Yeah, Music Fest is huge. Yeah, there's, uh, they have like 60, 70 bands over a stretch of days. So um, that's going to be his, that thing is going to be a part of Music Fest. It's pretty wild. I understand. Speaking of Slash, it's been bothering me. Did you tell us last week, Preston, that he wasn't going to be at the Oscars and that's why Wolfie was playing? I The way that I read that story, yeah. it seemed as if he... It wasn't clear. No. Um, but, yeah, he ended up obviously playing. Well, and then, and they, they both did, yeah. And Wolfie didn't show up till the end. So maybe no. he did kind of surprise or change his path because yeah. he realized how big it was going to be. Not really sure. Uh, the band Train has announced their eighth <laughs> voyage of <Jeez>. sail <laughs> across... What? No, I just haven't heard about them. Oh, Train? Yeah. Yeah, so they're doing their eighth voyage of sail across the sun cruise... Mm. That departs from Miami to Cozumel on February 13th and returns five days later. Uh, other bands on the ship include Living Color and Matt Nathanson with several others. Prices start around 1000 bucks, and booking begins on March 29th. Gin Blossoms and Toe the Wet Sprocket will co-headline a tour this summer. And Vertical Horizon is yes. scheduled as an opening this, act. So that's... Yeah. That's one of those fun collections. Totally. Vertical Horizon as well. Yep. Toe the Wet Sprocket. Uh, Gin Blossom's lead singer Robin Wilson said, I'm looking forward to an awesome summer of fine rock. Uh, friendship between the two headliners goes back over 30 years. In 1992, when Toe the Wet Sprocket and Bart on their first headlining shows, uh, Gin Blossom's opened for them. I have this kind of weird relationship with Toe the Wet Sprocket because... I love that band. I think their harmonies are fantastic. Amazing, they yeah. Do, they do three-part harmonies, and they're just really uh, neat melodies that they, they they weave in and out of each other. But I, I had a chance to interview them a couple of times throughout the years, and they're not unkind, yeah. but they're just kind of... A little full of themselves? No. Pompous? Kind of not Dicks. wanting... No. Not wanting to do the radio thing, oh. and, and I was, it, it was always a tough interview. You do realize you're towed the wedge sprocket. Well, don't but you? back then yeah. they were, they were hit. Yeah, you know, they were hitting, and they, I don't know. But I, anyhow, I bet it's changed now. It probably yeah. has changed yeah. now. I think we could drive think, to your house. I think Glenn is the lead singer. Okay, uh, but yeah, it, you know, it, I, I, it was just kind of weird. But I, I really, really like that band a lot. They're, they're going to rename it Toad the Wet Mortgage. Uh, August 15th, they will be playing the Wind Creek Event Center in Bethlehem. And it'd be great if that tour swung a little bit closer. But Bethlehem's not too far away at all. So we shall see. Yeah, Glenn Phillips. Yeah, that's his name. All right, and the last thing, Brad. New Bon Jovi music tomorrow morning, Ooh. debuting with Pierre Robert at 11 a.m. That seems suitable. As long as we finish our show by 11 a.m. <laughs> Which, yeah, we'll see. And we will be doing a live broadcast, and you never know how that goes, but uh, we'll be at the ballpark. But uh, Pierre is going to handle some brand new Bon Jovi and serve it to you on a plata tomorrow morning here on W. Excellent. So just a heads up on that. All right, we will take one more break. We're kind of skedaddling a little bit on the earlier side because we got a plane to catch and all that good stuff. So we will return in a moment. We'll get the letter of the day for the word of the week. So stay put. We'll be right back.